Webster's bread. Yeah. Only place we've seen that'll protect us from the wind. Well, I guarantee you it'll cost you. There never was a man like Matt Webster for squeezing a dime. When a man has what you want, you gotta pay. I'd like to talk to Mr. Webster. Yeah, the boss of your outfit? Uh, I'd like to have a powwow with your chief. It's all right, Siloti. He's not from Lower Town. Oh, ma'am, uh, name's Yates. I got a herd up on the high ground. I kind of uh, want to talk to Mr. Webster. The answer's no, Mr. Yates. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk to Mr. Webster. My husband died three years ago. Oh, well, um, do you mind if I explain my problem to whoever you got There's running? There's nothing to explain. Look, Mrs. Webster, if I can't bed my herd down your property, I'm going to have to double back to Dutch Flat. And I'm short on rations now. If you've got any fee you'd want, I'd gladly pay it. Look, Mr. Yates, I don't want your money. And I don't want your herd or your men anywhere near Broken Bluff. Is that clear enough? Four or five days to get around. Heading right into the teeth of that wind. Yeah, well, there's no way around it. Being as we can't cross the Webster land. Can we lay over here until that north passes? Not much protection. But it's better than heading into the wind on a gully stretch like this. Well, if we start off now, we'll be running on half rations. If we lay over a day or two, well, we'll be down to thirds. Can we pick up some supplies in Broken Bluff? Tell you about this town of Broken Bluff. Well, the upper part is strictly a Sunday go to meeting outfit. That lower part is made up of sawmill hands and miners. And believe me, both hands, they've, they've got as much use for a drover as a long-tailed cat has for a rocking chair. <laughs> well, we're just going to have to figure out some... Yeah, looks like a committee come to make sure we don't even come close to their precious little town. To get this straight, you want us to lay over for two days, huh? That's right. You don't seem to understand this, uh, these supplies I was talking about. Uh, I'm a little short on cash. No problem, Mr. Yates. Besides being mayor of the town, I also own the Broken Bluff General Store. Uh, how much extra do I have to pay for this easy credit? All we're asking is that you lay over for two days. The thing is, uh, if you want those supplies, you got to lay over until after election time. Oh, what uh, Talbot means is we'd appreciate it if you and your men kind of joined in. Join in how? Uh, so long as your men are inside the county line, they have the right to vote. That's the law. Now, how many drovers you got with you this time? Uh, 23, no. What's this election about? Yeah, it's a bunch of women making up a big fuss about getting the vote. Yeah, so they can close down every gambling table, saloon, and dance hall in Lower Town. But a vote for the present administration means a vote for free drinking men, free thinking women, and free turning faro wheels. Hey, hey, a proper hey, place, of course. Hey, hey. <laughs> and I can figure on your casting a vote for democracy and liberty? If, uh, if this election doesn't turn out your way, then it's no supplies, though, hmm? well, What uh, Talbot here means... I think Yates gets my meaning clear enough. No votes, no supplies. You ain't for women voting, are you? Yeah, I never thought about that. Why, it ever come to that, it'd be ruination. And you won't mind staying over a day just for a good cause. <laughs> well, we see your men don't mind the wait. Free beer for all the drovers. Yeah. Starting as soon as you line up for it, right, Talbot? Sure. See you in town, Mr. Yates? Yeah, we'll be there. That free beer was a magic word. If the beer and the glad hand don't work, there's other ways. And I'll use them. Not that way. You was with me when I talked to the drovers. What's gonna make them change their minds? Maybe the crazy women in this town. Cassie Webster, for one. Mrs. Webster, you mean? All right, Mrs. Webster. 
Oh, I know my place. But maybe Mrs. Webster and all the rest of them long-nosed females from Upper Town ought to remember theirs. The only women those drovers are likely to get interested in are the kind they find in your saloons. I hope you're right. Beer all set out for him? Six kegs. Lined up inside the Applejack. Oh, that's what I call a right nice looking town. That ain't what I call it. Oh, that's Lower Town. I see now why they call it Broken Bluff. Yeah, half the people, half the prairie dogs and drovers. Set up for you. Right over there in the apple deck. Where'd that tame sheriff get to? Just let me handle it. Now, Cassie, please. You're in my way, Mr. Thorner. Of course, you could have your city council throw us in jail again for not having a permit. I didn't put you in jail, Cassie. Then you'll let us pass? All right. March your full heads off. Just let you handle it. I don't notice you doing anything about that female bartender of yours with a bass drum. Why don't you fire her? Think I want my saloons chopped up for kindling? Tell me, they do this often? Two or three times a day. What do they want to vote for? To put me out of business, that's what for. Cassie Webster put them up to it. She's the widow of the biggest rancher we had around these parts. Since her husband died, it seems like she's got nothing else to do but make trouble. Of course, this is a democracy. They got the right to their opinions. Opinions? They win themselves this election. You won't be mayor no more. Much less get yourself sent to the state capital. Leave it to a bunch of high now, button look, females. Now, look, Mr. Yates don't want to hear about our problems. That's right, I don't. I'm only interested in getting my herd moving. Here's that list of supplies I told you about. Oh, fine. Hey. Time enough for business tomorrow. After the election. Oh, sure, right. See you later. to see about putting out some extra beer. I've looked in every saloon in town. I can't find her nowhere. Who are you looking for? Oh, that uh, lady bartender everybody's been talking about. Mm. Well, she's probably pounding a drum out there in that parade. Oh. Huh. Yeah, you're too young to be drinking all by yourself. All right, ladies, get busy. Uh, uh, I'd like to stay out of their way if I were you. a little bit of misunderstanding, that's all. These drovers are our guests now. We don't want to give them the wrong idea about our little town, do we? Well, you just see that Cassie Webster and them crazy hatchet women of hers don't give them the wrong idea. Then you can take all of this out of next month's taxi. All right, Bill. Carol, Sue, you're going home. Yeah. I'm sorry, Cassie. For what? I've told you ask for it, marching down here into Lower Town after I warned you. No woman has to ask for brutality from a man. Cassie, if you don't get these crazy notions out of your head. Well, I happen to think they're not crazy. Women pay taxes, but they can't vote. Do these drovers pay any taxes? <sighs> I'm gonna get tower to get some more beer out. I suppose I ought to thank you. Well, you don't have to if you don't want. I don't want to be obligated. 
You're not. I'd have done the same thing for any woman who was being pushed around. Well, then you've been kept pretty busy, Mr. Yates, because women have been pushed around ever since time began. Yeah, well, I haven't been around that long. Tell me, you think getting the vote's going to take care of all this? I think it's a start. You see, we got to make people realize we mean it. That's why we go around beating drums and parading and, and breaking up beer kegs. Then I, I guess you don't agree with that, do you? I think breaking up those kegs is a terrible waste of good beer. Beeves are spooking up real bad. Ah, oh, well, we better head back to the herd. Break the game up, fellas. All right, boys, let's go. Come on, let's set them up. We'll rustle them back to the herd. What? Hustle them and rustle them. That's you, too, Wishbone. What are you talking about? I realize your What's cooking isn't like that. All right. Well, there's only one thing left to do, Roddy, and that's bed them down in Webster's Canyon. That's what we're going to do, Jim, whether Cassie Webster likes it or not. But there's free lunch. Mm. Next time. early for a social visit, isn't it, Mrs. Webster? This is no social visit, Mr. Yates. Mr. Thorner tells me that uh, you and your drovers are planning to vote in our election tomorrow. Have you ever known Thorner to be a liar? Now, there are a lot of things about Mike Thorner I don't like, but he's no liar. Uh, then me and my boys are going to vote in your election tomorrow. Why, Mr. Yates? You got nothing to do with Broken Bluff. Doesn't matter to you what happens around there. Why are you going to vote? Well, because I promised Thorner we would, that's why. The mayor of your town, the laws of this state say we can vote, so we will. So it doesn't matter if, uh, if somebody's a stranger, a saddle bum, a drunk. Just so long as he wears pants, that gives him the right to vote. Just so long as he's an all-conquering male, is that it? Yeah, well, that's the way it is all over the country. In Wyoming, women vote. This isn't Wyoming, is it? And one of these days, women all over the United States are going to have the right to vote. Well, let me tell you, when that day comes, I hope you cast your vote for whoever you like. In the meantime, I've got to get the herd moving through the pass before nightfall. So I can't change your mind, Mr. Yates? You're going to be so stubborn that nothing I can say is going to make any difference? I'm no more stubborn than the next man. You're always telling everybody what you want them to do. You might try asking for a change. i got to get my herd moved out. All right, nobody told anybody to quit. Let's get the herd moving out. I suppose if I had free kegs of beer to pass out, things would be different, wouldn't it? You got something against beer? No, just when it's used to buy votes. See, Thornton's brand on me, is that it? But if I offered to buy your votes for female suffrage... Oh, yeah? No. Well, that's good, because you couldn't do it. Well, I can stop you from staying over on my land long enough to vote. Not without an army, you couldn't. Well, I'll get an army. Ms. Webster and her committee just come back from the trail camp. They don't look too pleased. I guess they didn't get far with the drovers. Cassie Webster better start giving up. I told you her name is Mrs. I know Mrs. Webster. I knew old man Webster left her a lot of money when he died, but I didn't know he left her that much. Talbot, you can stop that kind of talk right now. I admire Mrs. Webster. Even if I think she's crazy about this voting business. Well, don't let your admiration carry you too far. Look, if them women win this election, they're going to put me out of business. And I've worked too long and too hard to let that happen. I understand. You don't even begin to understand. If they shut down Lower Town, the gambling and all the rest, I'm just a saddle bum, not worth the time to run out of town. I'm willing to do all I can. 
All right. Now, you and Cassie... I mean, Mrs. Webster. They're pretty friendly. Now, you go talk to her. You go out there and talk her into uh, calling this whole suffragette business off. Well, we ain't that friendly. Now, it just may take you a little time to get her to change her mind. You ain't gonna do it sitting here. Jerry, why don't you go on back to your jail before somebody steals it from you? change your mind for her, maybe he won't. But if he don't, we got trouble. Them suffragettes got enough votes from the respectable men in this town to put their own people into office. And before that happens, we're gonna vote every grave in Boot Hill. We're gonna make sure them drovers vote the right way, even if we have to use guns to show them the right way. And maybe, just maybe, we might have to put a few bullets in a few people. That would be a crying shame. Let's hope Mr. Thorner changes her mind for her. Cassie, I'm telling you this for your own good. How do you know what my good is, Mike? You're young. You're pretty. Well, you could be if you wanted to. Instead of running around with a bunch of crazy women yelling for the vote, you could... Well, you could, uh... Could what, Mike? Get married again? Now, why? Oh. That's what every woman wants. Not every woman. Especially those that have been married. That don't prove anything. Jake Webster shouldn't have got married in the first place. He was too old, too set in his ways. Oh, he was a real man, he was. He knew what he wanted and he took it. Isn't that what you admire? You weren't happy with him. That don't mean you can't be happy with somebody else. Like who? Like me. If you was married to me, you... You wouldn't have no time for such nonsense as parading around a man in the vote. Such nonsense. I've heard that before. I've heard that so many times before. Tell me, did you ever know that a, that a child's heart could break over a little rag doll? Or that a woman could live in the same house with a man for six years, six long years, and still be lonely? What are you talking about? nonsense. Cassie, you really ought to listen to me. Votes for women, Mr. Thorner. Oh, believe you me, I'll parade today and tonight and tomorrow. I may even beat that big drum. I'm glad you came to see me, though. I found out you want to be mayor again so bad you're even willing to marry me. Smell that norther blowing up. You smell something else. Beside the norther, I mean. Smoke, maybe. Smoke? Yeah, but I don't see it. Look there. Well, it ain't no prairie fire. Somebody's trail camp? Well, maybe. We better turn that herd before they get a whip of their smoke. They smelled it already, Jim. <laughs> Smoke up ahead. We smelled it. We had a time keeping them from stampeding. I don't see any smoke. 
Now you can't see it from here. But there's something burning up there. Uh, better go take a look. Simon, stay with the herd. Quincy, yeah? Yeah. Females mind telling me what you're doing here? Handing our cooking car. Yeah, for what? For that army you told me to organize. Don't see any food around to cook, just smoke. Well, do you know we forgot the food? Now, wasn't that foolish of us? But then, of course, you can't expect anything much better out of women. Well, using this green wood is what's causing all the smoke, isn't that right? I know, it's just terrible, isn't it? Look, there's a norther blowing up, and I gotta get this herd to low ground before it hits. It's either that or head back for Dutch Flat, which means... Which means you won't have any time to vote tomorrow, doesn't it? You or your men. I'm taking this herd through the pass. Well, now, is anybody stopping you, Mr. Yates? Well, this smoke's getting the bees a little edgy. Probably start a stampede. Oh. Now, do you want to put it out, or do we? I'm not about to put that fire out, Mr. Yates. Bell? You better put some more wood on that cook fire. All right, all right. You win for now. We'll bed the herd down where it is, but we're going to bring it through tomorrow. Smoke or no smoke or women or no women, we're coming through. Not unless you're willing to drive them over us. You've been talking about women being pushed around all their lives. But you've been doing an awful lot of pushing around yourself to get what you want. That election tomorrow on Broken Bluff concerns me. I'm going to be in there voting, me and my men. <laughs> um, you know, um, Cassie was kind of fibbing. We got food back on the rocks. <laughs> well, you look terrible undernourished. I tell you what you do. You sneak out of camp tonight, and you come on down here, and I'll put some fat on your bones. Well, thank you very much, Miss... Uh... Uh, Mrs. It's Mrs. Connolly. Well, thank you, Mrs. Connolly. <laughs> Go ahead. You can call me Belle. My husband wouldn't mind. Oh, really? No. He's been dead ten years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see you later on. Bye-bye now. Bye. <laughs> I knew they were starving you. <laughs> well, it's not quite true, actually. It's just that I've got such an enormous appetite. Well, I knew you wouldn't think so to look at me, but I can't get enough to eat. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. These are delicious. <laughs> Do you know, back home in England, tea and crumpets was always my... <gasps> Watch your language. What do you mean? Well, I've been a lady bartender for ten years now, and I know what crumpets are. You know, that's the way this country looked when the first human came here. That's the way it's going to look when the last...
last of us goes. Are you worried about it, Mrs. Webster? Don't call me Mrs. Webster. I hate that name. I'm sorry. Call me Cassie. Cassie. You know, I was 18 when my parents married me to Jake Webster. He was 50. Oh, it was a good match. He was very rich. No, it wasn't. It wasn't good at all. I was too young to understand myself, or even him, I suppose. But I cried when he died. It was expected of me. And yet underneath it all, I think I was... I don't know. Relieved? That's not too uncommon, I see her. You know, I had a, a kind of a stepmother once. She never beat me or anything like that, but she uh, never said two decent words in the whole time we were around each other. Well, she finally took fever and passed away. I tried to feel sad about it, but it was impossible. So I just ended up feeling... Relieved? Yeah, I guess that's it. That's how it was with me for so long. I don't know why I'm telling you all this, Mr. Yates. I guess it's because right now it seems like we're the only two people in the whole world. Mr. Yates is uh, all right, but Rowdy'd be a little friendly, don't you think? All right. Rowdy. saying that over and over and after a while it doesn't make any sense at all. You're the prettiest suffragette I ever saw. You don't understand, do you? No, I guess not. Well, I guess I started out being a suffragette because I wanted to get revenge on men. Because my own marriage had been so miserable. But you know, well now it's something more than that. You see, the right to vote would give women dignity. It would make persons of them in their own right. And you think that solves everything, don't you? Mm -hmm. Just like every other man. I don't think anything right now. Well, it doesn't, you know. It doesn't really solve anything at all. You're still not moving your herd through that pass. Well, look here, Roddy. I'm almost old enough to be your father. Oh, yeah. fortunately, you ain't. Well, of course not. I'm a bachelor, and it wouldn't look right for you to have a bachelor for a father. But what I'm getting at is, are you going to let these women hold us up? Well, I'm afraid they already have. Besides, I'm not too sure they're not right. If Providence had wanted women folk to have the vote, it would have... Would have what? Hmm? Well, made them more like men, I guess. Women are still in the pass. Oh, lady bartender, though. Enough of them to get in the way if we try to run the beeves through. Oh, we can't do that. Yeah. Why not? Once those beeves start coming through there, those women will scatter faster and you can say, votes for women. Well, suppose they don't. Well, nobody would be that stupid. Well, maybe the women would. Oh. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to ride in town. Well, that isn't going to get anybody out of anybody's way. Well, as a sheriff in Broken Bluff, he might be able to do something. You didn't finish your breakfast. You sick or something? Well, I don't feel too good. Maybe it was something I ate. This ain't part of Broken Bluff, Mr. Yates. I got no right to arrest nobody out there. I mean, you got no intention of arresting anybody out there. Look, Mr. Thorner, you still want us to vote against that suffragette business? I feel the same way I always did. 
You sure ain't acting the same way. Yates, you want them supplies? You be sure and vote the way you said. Yeah. My first job is to get that herd through the pass, though. After that, my men and I might not have time to vote. Um, Cassie Webster's heading out for the ranch. Getting provisions for those women blocking your path. If you want to save time, you can talk her out of it. Ranch is a mile out of town, heading north. Cassie won't listen to him. He might. Won't he did to me? Voting's begun. I know that. Sherry, you ought to be over at the barber shop, seeing that nobody votes that ain't entitled to. Well, you've done a good bit of talking. Talking that ain't accomplished a thing. What do you want me to do? Nothing. I'm taking over. What, the talking? The doing. Where are you going? Well, the best and the fastest way to kill a snake is lopping its head off. You stay away from Cassie. Now, if she used to get her barns burned down and her stock run off, well, I figured she might uh, stop worrying about votes for women. You figure the same way? I don't like it. Take your hands off. Now, you listen to me. I'm done listening. You're not going any place to hear me. <laughs> you think you are. You're going to try and stop me? Oh, it's just that if we don't get the herd through the pass, the men are going to have an awful lot of time on their hands. Time enough to vote. What about the northern? Oh, that's all dying out. However, I could, uh, I could let them think that they've got to stay with the herd and keep working until after the voting's over with. You mean that? Well, people get their feelings going. They don't often think straight. I know. Ooh, how about that? You complaining? No, no, it just wasn't long enough, that's all. out front. No, I... Who's out there? I is Mike Thorner with him? No, I don't think so. Looks like Talbot and a few of his boys. If they start rushing the house, we're in trouble. Drover's in there with a gun. We'll pick you off. Not before I get you. Don 
fool votes for women. Nobody asked you to come here. On account of you, I killed a man out there. I suppose it'd been better if you'd killed a woman. They don't really count, do they? Like killing puppies nobody wants or a gopher's eating your crops. Shut up. That man you shot, the one you're crying about, was trying to kill me. Why don't you help him? Take it easy now. You're like a wild animal. What are you trying to do, kill him? Well, he swung on me. That didn't make any difference. Well, he started the fight, you saw it. Well, he has his pride. He was ashamed of hitting me. Mike, are you all right? All right. Cassie, I've been wrong about so many things, I can't begin to tell you. But there's one thing I got it. I thought a woman asking for the vote wasn't a real woman. Didn't have the same feelings, or wants, or... Cassie, will you marry me? Oh, Mike, of course I will. <laughs> seen a lady bartender before. Well, now that you have. I like them. Ma'am? <laughs> oh, it's real nice of you all to ride out and say goodbye. We owe you our vote. After all, if your men hadn't voted in favor of woman suffrage, well, I guess... Some of us even owe you more than that. Well, I'm one didn't vote for this suffrage business, and I'll mighty well tell you why. Because if this thing grows in another 50 years, this country just won't be fit to live in. where you're headed? Going to a town called Poco Tiempo. What for? You have business there. What kind of business? What's this all about, mister? I asked you what kind of business. Not until you tell me what this is all about. Well, just over a cattle ride 15, 20 miles east of here. The boss sent us to town to pick up expense money. The boss sent two of you on one horse? No, we got caught in a rock slide. This one got lame. The other one broke his leg. We... He had to shoot him. You said something about expense money. That's right. Supplies and stuff. Just where did you expect to get this expense money? From the confectionery store. From the bank, Mr. Payton. How do you know the bank's still standing? 
Then? You don't know anything about the fire. But you know the bank's still standing. Look, we don't know anything Save about... Save your breath. He ain't going to bleed you anyhow. Why not? Because it's not the truth? There's nothing in the saddlebag, Mr. Payton. What'd you expect to find? Perhaps $10,000. Stolen from the bank? No. Not from the bank. Well, we can prove who we are and what we're doing. Oh, shut up, will you? Oh, you are a real rough one, aren't you, mister? You got no call coming around here bracing us. That's for us to decide. Take that rifle off me, mister. Charlie, you double ride with one of these men. Will, you take the other. Look, I ain't riding nowhere. Hold on, Roddy. They're riding us into town. That beats hoofing it. Mister, you're coming with us. Now, you can come peaceably, or you can make trouble. But either way, you're coming with us. <laughs> Anything yet? Nothing yet, but we're still looking. This might have been a town once, but sure ain't no more. Finest cotton-grown country in Texas. It'll be a town again. All right, come on. <laughs> to you? What are you getting at? Is there any reason why you don't want to go in? You lead the way, mister. You're the one who's trying to prove Sister, we just brought these two men in. Are they the men? You saw them when they grabbed him and ran him off. You got a good look. Are these the ones? We've never seen them before, Mr. Payton. Never. Sorry to trouble you. All right, let's get out of here, all of it. We can't go on like this, sister. We've got to tell them. But who can we tell? I suppose we can't. You know we can't. All right. You didn't steal the money. It means you didn't do the other thing. You're free to go. What other thing? Murder a priest? That's one thing they might have told us before. We'd have been on their side. Yeah. Well, looky yonder. Wouldn't you know it? First thing they rebuild is a sloop. Come on. Whoa. What do you mean, whoa? We got two things to do in this town. That's pick up money and... Get some remounts and get back to the herd. I know. Well, why don't you see if you can pick us up a couple horses? Well, take money. Well, it's we came here to get, isn't it? This horse ought to be worth something in trade. I'm going over to the bank. I'll meet you later.
Brown's delivery stable, right here. You got a couple of horses to sell. A sale? Yeah, this one's lame. All a little rest, he'll be all right. I'd like to swap you him and give you something to boot for two sound ones. Here. <coughs> be three or four weeks before I can be rode. I know. Well, I don't have no horses. It says livery stable. Thought you had a corral out and back somewhere. Oh, I had horses, all right. All of them in there. Every the last one have gone in the fire. Must have been mighty bad. Yeah. Middle of the night. Like seeing your own family burn up. I never heard no screaming like it. Well, anybody else have horses? You won't find any horse in this town for sale. We need everyone that got left. I'll even buy that one off you. Well, that won't do us no good unless we get something to ride. We gotta hook up with our outfit. Well, where'd your outfit at? Cattle drive, 20 miles from here. More by now. Moving north? Yeah. Well, you best take the stage out of here. Stage? Yeah, we got a line running between here and Blainesville. That's 50 miles northwest. You can pick up horses there. Get what you came for. Yeah, they had enough money in the bank for Mr. Favor's draft. Uh, we owe anything here? Just ain't no horses to be had, unless we reach a town 50 miles from here. Who says? Livery man. 50 miles sounds kind of crazy to me. No more than us walking back to the herd. The man says we can reach that town by stage. Yep. Coach pulls out in the morning. You want to buy our horse there? I'm going to need some care. About $15, as high as I can go. That's fair enough, considering everything, I guess. Don't want to sell the saddles, do you? Well, them saddles ain't inlaid, but they're good working saddles. Ought to be worth a few dollars. Well, we'll keep the saddles. What I want to know is who'd want to kill a priest? Bad thing. Real good man. See, where is cotton here? Planting's everything. The whole crop was in that storehouse when it burned. Now, Father Sebastian, he went out to other places and raised money to buy seed to keep us going. Went all over, talked to many new. Night he got back, him and that money disappeared. Two men, the nuns over at the mission, saw it. They grabbed him and yanked him away. It was a shot. Well, now, Father Sebastian, he's the kind of man that turned up if that shot had missed. Well, uh... I'll need a bill of sale on that horse. All right. We'll fix it up over at the saloon and have a drink on it. All right, hold it right there. Sebastian, are you all right? I'm fine. Sleeping on this hard pallet. The harder the better, so I've heard. Maybe you tell me now. Who were those two men out there you didn't know? We told you the truth. We didn't know them. Those men were brought to us as suspects. What'd you say? Well, what was there to say? We'd never seen them before. But they wait. They'll go away and stop and want you two to come down here. They went away. We're being very careful that no one learns about this place. All it means is the Padre's life. Sisters. Do as I say. Go to Mr. Payton and the others and tell them about this. Father, Father, we don't mean to disobey you, Father, but we can't do it. Go and tell them. Please forgive us for your sake. That's right, for his sake. I'll ask you again. How long do you think you're going to get away with this? The town is blocked off everywhere. How can you get out? Hm. He won't mention money. I'll mention it. How are we going to get the money out of here? That's real easy to mention. We're not going to take it out. They are. We? You and her. The saints be with it. You think you can rely on the sisters? They like you. Suppose we put it up to them. We can't do it. Oh, you mean you don't care what happens to the Padre? I wouldn't think you dare. According to you, no. According to me, there's no choice. Sisters, you, your work is upstairs. You, you are needed there. They can get somebody else to do the work. There's plenty of women in this town. All the sisters have got to say is they're 
tired of something. Yes, they can take care of things until we return. No. Oh, Father, we've got to do as these men say. Sister Frances, the town isn't a town anymore, and we have lost the money. We can start over. But we can't lose you. Well, what do you want us to do? You take this bag to Blainesville, both of you. As simple as that. No hardship. When you get there, you go to the hotel. There'll be a man waiting for you, a man named Carter. You give him the bag. And Father Sebastian. As soon as Carter gets a bag, he'll telegraph us here. Ain't that something? One of the few buildings that escaped a fire. A telegraph office. Ain't that something? As soon as we have him, Carter, we'll turn the Padre loose. Understand? Sisters, you stay here. We'd have no other choice, Father. You going or not? Yes. Yes, we're going. Sister Francis, Sister Joan, I order you not to. Father, we're not disobeying, but you must go on living, whether what we do seems wrong to you or not. Please forgive us. Just a minute. We'll keep the money. The stage doesn't leave till morning. I didn't know you was leaving town, Emma. It's a dull town, Mr. Swanson. Couldn't get that roulette wheel to do what you wanted it to, huh? That's right. We're gonna miss you. I'm sure you are. I mean it. You take care of yourself here. Don't ever worry about me. Dance hole or not, that's a mighty pretty girl. It's going to be a long ride. Yes. Yes, it will be. I expect we should get acquainted. Yes, I expect we should. I'm Emma Carney. I'm Sister Frances. And this is Sister Joan. <laughs> I felt kind of funny when I saw you in here. I got the feeling maybe you weren't going to approve of me. That's odd. I somehow got the feeling that you might not approve of us. Well, bless you both. What I mean is, I think we'll get along fine. Yes, I'm sure we will. Hey, I've been wondering how those gals are going to get along. Yeah, well, why wouldn't they? They're all gals, uh, ain't they? So to speak. Well, are uh, you ready to get started? Yeah, wait for the sign painter. About time he shows up. Uh, let me see that, please. What do you have in that bag, sister? You may look inside, Mr. Faden. Sorry? All right, come on. Come on what? Get out and bring your satchel with you. What for? You know we're not letting anyone leave town without searching them first. You try searching me. Are you going to get out by yourself, or do you want my assistance? I'm staying right here. You can take this. think you're doing, Peyton, wringing a chicken's neck? Handle those things carefully. I just launder them. Here. What kept you from dropping it on the ground? I'm sorry. Don't say you're sorry. Just don't say anything. I want to hate you with a clear conscience. 
men. You don't know how well off you are without them. All right? It's all right. Here, I'll take the case. All right, you boys can get on board now. Can I have that bag? I'll put it in the bag. We searched everybody on the coach but the sisters. What I figured. Now it's my turn to get some fresh air. Meet you upstairs in five minutes. That's all the time it takes me to saddle the horses. Saddle the horses? You figuring to walk into Blainsville? You want to miss the sisters' arrival? You told them to give the money to somebody named Carter. You think I'm playing tricks? Who else is in this but us? You know there ain't nobody named Carter? Why'd you tell them there was? What if they start asking around for somebody named Carter? We'll be there. Yeah. But you told them we were staying here, letting the father go and we get the telegraph. I told them what I had to tell them. If we're gonna get there before they get there, we'd better get started. I told you I was gonna saddle the horses. What if we have any trouble getting out of here? We'll get out, as long as we let them search us. As long as we don't have the money. You'll be able to tell everybody what we look like. You saddle the horses. Like a baby, does he? A baby bulldog. Is it, uh, is it all right? Is what all right? Well, is it all right to speak? I've been wondering why you've been so silent all this while. Have you? Yes. I mean, yes, I think I have. I'm sure she has. I'm sure she has, too. You ladies care for a drink, though. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. What's in it? Just plain water, ma'am. Save it. We may have to wash later. Uh, what did you want to speak about, Mr. Yates? Well, I want to thank you, ma'am, for helping Jim and me out of that mess. So well, thank you, too. He only told the truth. Well, sometimes the truth's hard to come by when a man needs it the most. Is that bad? Well, it's more of a nuisance than anything else. May I help you? Sister. Much. Practically a diamond hitch, ma'am. You ladies must learn a lot in your work. I've known how to tie bandages since I was a little girl. I was brought up on a ranch with my four brothers. Where was that? Southwest Texas. That's my country. What was your name then? You don't mind me asking. Conroy. 
Conroy? Well, I've, I've heard my pa, Dan, Dan Yates, I've heard him speak of the Conroys. Gee, I probably would have met you before, but I went into the war when I was 16. Say, wasn't your family hit pretty hard in the Comanche raid? Yes, I lost two of my brothers. But that's how I met Sister Frances. Some of us were taken to the church for sanctuary. Father Sebastian. Tell you you're working for a new line. All fine equipment. Yeah, and good men taking care of it. Why are you carrying any grease? I am, unless one of them lunkheads forgot to hang the bucket. You're gonna have to work this wheel loose before it'll do any good. Don't hook the team, Jeff. Nothing like breaking down in the middle of nowhere. Oh, taking them long enough. Getting that wheel off was hard. I don't know how you stand in those clothes you wear. You don't think about it. Come to think of it, I don't know why you girls ever let yourself in for a life like that. Ever feel sorry about it? Sorry? Good-looking kid like you. Ever wish you could back out? Back out? From what are you doing, being a nun? A sister? Well, I still have that choice. Oh, yeah? See, I haven't taken my final vows yet. Oh? And maybe you're not so sure you want to stay in. Why do you say that? Where well, you've been looking at that drover. Can't say as I blame you. You sure got a lot of play in it. Something wrong with that plane. It's another 10 miles to the relay station. Wheel stays on and we'll make it. Now, let's get it off the jack. All right, ladies. Ready to go. So much joke, boy. Make a stopover for repairs. Might be a little while, so best you ladies go inside. Let me help you with that, ma'am. This isn't so bad. We have to spend the night. Us girls can be real cozy here. Spend the night? But we have no time for that. The men sound real discouraged about the coach. It ain't the wheel. It's the axle. It's bent. 
We'll have to take her off, put some heat on it, and straighten her out. Uh, I guess I better tell the passengers. Ladies, I'm sorry, but it looks like we're going to have to lay over till morning. Well, we can't do that. We must go straight through to Blainesville. Believe me, ma'am, it can't be helped. We've got to fix a coach. Ben says you ladies can have the cabin for the night. But we can't wait that long. Is there a, is there a buggy we can hire or, or anything? Ben, can you help? Well, there's a buckboard I guess you could use. But it's more than 25 miles from here to Blainesville, ma'am. Yes, yeah, sister, and you don't want to go off alone like that. Oh, but I'm afraid we must. He'll let one of us go with you. Oh, please, you must let me do this my way. Well, there's a rig I, I can fix up for you. Oh, thank you. Jim? I ain't worried about that, ma'am. Two ladies that bothers me. You sure you want to do this? Yes. Yes, we'll be all right. How's it coming? Well, we'll heat it up and straighten it. Headed for the grill. Didn't hardly wait for the buckboard to pull out. Stay around in case they need you, huh? It doesn't belong to you. Give it to me. No, you can't have it. Come on, Mister. give me that. Hold it right there. Go ahead and pull that. Go ahead. Drop that bag. Drop it. Turn around. Get out of here! Keep going. Oh, we, we want to thank you. You're liable to uh, run into some more of this. I think you better let me drive you back. The coach will be ready in a few hours. We're all working on it. Well, all right. I'll sit in the back, sister. Yes. from Poco Tempo. Says your priest is dead. Straight enough. That ought to do it. Let's get it back 
Ivan Kovacs. Father Sebastian. Yes. But I'm being selfish, too. I'm thinking about my own life. That isn't selfish. I'm afraid, sister. I've been afraid for a long time. Yes, yes, I know. I don't feel I can go through with it. I don't feel I belong. And now that it's too late to help Father Sebastian... Well, we must still finish our journey. Father would have wanted that. You'll take the money to Blainesville, where it'll be safe. And then? Joan, I'm sure most of us felt the same way you do. Deeply humble, fearful of taking the final step. Not you. Yes, even now, about many things. Not you, sister. What do you think we are, Joan? We all doubt ourselves. We all feel unworthy. And why? What is there in it for any of you? Helping others. Expressing our faith and devotion and sacrifice. This makes us feel worthwhile. This renews our own strength. I don't have that in me. Oh, yes, but you do. The need to serve is very strong in you, Joan. And you must respond to it for peace of mind and fulfillment. For you, it's the true happiness. I've made up my mind, sister. I'm not taking my final vow. She's all yours, ready to roll. I'll tell the women. Yeah? You have a kind of a man, all right. Kind of what? kind of man a woman would make a fool of herself over. What are you talking about? That pretty young nun. She's not going to take her final vows just because of you. Have you been drinking? I have not. That makes sense, will you? Oh, I'm making all kinds of sense. That girl, she's not in with the rest of those church women yet. Not all the way. She hasn't given her final word, and now she's not going to. Uh, what's that got to do with me? You and her come from the same part of Texas, don't you? Yeah. You're the good-looking boy from home. She saw the likes of you, and that was it. You always go around talking like this? Oh, I'm a gossipy, meddlesome female. You know any who aren't? Yeah, those two in there. No, thank you. Uh, sister, um, I don't want you to think I've been making any trouble for you, not on purpose anyway. Trouble? Yeah, I, well, what I mean is I have the greatest respect for you ladies, all of you, and I don't want you thinking I'm trying to be fancy or anything. Fancy? Oh, oh, have you been talking to that girl, Emerald? Yeah, she told me that Sister Joan was going to quit your outfit on account of me. Oh, please believe me. Sister Joan has all the qualities needed to become a dedicated nun. But leaving us or staying with us, that's her decision. Hers alone, you had nothing to do with it. Oh. I'm sure glad you said that. I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with me talking to her about her kinfolk. No. No, of course not. Perhaps... Perhaps you've become a symbol to Sister Joan. 
Your image is part of a world that you used to know. You've been very helpful, very strong. This might affect her decision. But whatever the outcome, it's no fault of yours. We're all waiting for you. Why don't you and me uh, sit together the rest of this trip, huh? Come on. Jeff, drop the bag of tools there. Painters. <clears throat> oh, uh, Ben, give this to the painter when he gets back. Give this to him, too. Be a good chance for you and me to get acquainted. Kind of a new idea on your part, isn't it? Yeah, that's the way it goes. I saw you standing in that doorway, and you look mighty pretty. Uh -huh. Stretch your legs, folks. Stopping you to water the horses. Pardon me, ma'am. Thank you, Rowdy. Rowdy. Hmm? Can I talk to you? Excuse me. What are you trying to prove, playing up to that girl? Oh, we're just having a little fun. Well, she don't think so, not with all that hogwash you're giving her. She knows I don't mean it. Well, maybe not at first. For the last two hours now, she's been lapping it up. I'm older than you, Rowdy, and I know what I'm talking about. If you ain't careful, you're going to be neck deep in women trouble. I can take care of myself. I hope so. I hope that girl isn't going to be hurt by what he's doing. Hmm? Those two out there, haven't you noticed? No. He's been paying a lot of attention to her. Sister? Yes? Did you mean it when you said you were fearful and uncertain about taking my final vows? I felt just as you do. Mr. Yates. Yeah? How much farther would you say we had to go? Oh, I'd say around five miles or so. Oh. I wanted to tell you, ma'am, about uh, Emerald and me. Oh? We got engaged. Engaged? Yeah, I asked her and she said yeah. So you're gonna be all right when you get to Blainesville? After you leave the coach and all? You're thinking about the money? We're taking it straight to the bank. I don't believe there'll be any trouble now. Thank you. 
We've got to change the plans. Word just came through about the priest being shot. It's all over town. Nuns might find out about it before they get to the hotel. So we meet them just as soon as they step off the stage. That's right. One at a time. Men first. Come on, move. Get out of there. All right, move. Turn your back to me. That's it. You're behaving real nice. Come on. All right, ladies, move. Get out of there. OK, Coley, get the bag. Nothing in it. All right, where is it? That money belongs to God. Where is it? I'll never tell you. Ain't in here. Now listen, lady. Ah. I know where it is. You got it on you. You took it out of that bag and cashed it in them clothes of yours. Is that right, sister? They're women, Coley. Church women. Not much we can do about it. But you can. Get in there and take the money off of her. I wouldn't do anything to you. You act stubborn, you won't like what I'll do to your face. Haven't you done enough? Get in there. You next. Come on, come on. Search her. Which ones? That man. And this one. All right, a couple of you men take him. Let's get him in. I've been thanking God for his help. Now I want to thank you for helping God. Well, I was glad to help him, ma'am. Thank you, but the driver will take him somewhere he can rest. Oh, I'd like to talk to you. You all right now? Yes. All he needs is a good stiff drink. Come on, Jeff. What was it you wanted to talk to me about? I'm deeply touched by what you're trying to do, but it's unnecessary. Oh, well, what am I trying to do? Taking the veil is a final and irrevocable decision. We're all mortal. Even the best of us have our weaknesses. And when we're facing the sacred moment, we all tend to hesitate and falter. Yeah, I guess so. But I finally overcome my self-doubts. And I told Sister Frances that I was ready to take my final vows. I'm, I'm glad for you. That man was hurt and needed my help. A little while ago, you needed help, too. Sure, well, I understand. I hope you didn't think that... Uh... Well, what I mean is, uh, I understand why you sisters uh, help, because... Uh... Well, sisters are great helpers. I'm grateful that you spare me from having to spell it out for you. What about your engagement? Well, you don't have to worry about Emerald. She understands I didn't really mean it. Does she?
Emerald, there's a... Well, there's something I, I want you to have. $50? Yeah, well, you've been real good about this whole thing, and... Well, I, I wanted you to have it. Look, Rowdy, it was fun. I don't want to be paid for it. See you around sometime. So long. God bless you. Goodbye. We'll say goodbye now. And thank you. Goodbye. There go two real fine people. You bet. There goes another one. Like you say. <laughs> <laughs> just more coffee, boss? No, oh, thanks, Jim. Oh. Give me that plate. I'll get you some more. No. What's the matter with you, Jim? Let me go check the night guard for you. I've already done that, Quint. Oh, well, I just thought. Ain't broke yet. Yeah. All right. What is it? What's what? What are you all staring at me for? Who's staring? Well, I just want a couple of days off. That's all. Oh. Right here now. Sun up. It's no bother. What was you planning to do? Me camp here and rest up a spell? No. I but it appears to me it doesn't matter what I do as long as you spare me the time. Is that all you're going to tell us? Do I get the time? Say, uh, Pete, uh, where's the nearest town around here? Hondo Seco. Good-looking girls there? Yeah, I was through there one time. It's pretty good. I guess they haven't changed much. Oh, you can't tell about a thing like that. Man wants to check up. Can't much blame him. That's right. Boss, when I ask you once more, do I get the time or not? Well... Oh, hey, Seuss, when do we have to pick up that new remuda? Tomorrow, senor boss. How bad we need them horses? How good is a drove on foot? See, it's pretty bad, Jim. I'm afraid I couldn't rightly spare you. We've got to pick up that remuda near Hondo Seco. I'll tell you this, Mr. Favor. I don't want to quit the drive, but I sure will if I have to. Say, your business must be pretty serious. Who wasn't the one asked? <laughs> hey, Jim! Get easy. Look, suppose you uh, go along with a horse party, be a wrangler for a day or two. I ought to give you enough time to take care of your business, huh? Well, I'd stop over in Hondo Seco, maybe overnight, huh? Well, I don't think you're going to have to twist any of the other wrangler's arms to talk them into that. No, I don't know. I... No, that's the way it's got to be. How many men are you going to need, Jesus? Three would be enough, senor. I say, uh, well, as Quince has some business there, uh... You gotta take care of those young lovelies. Hey, yeah, but I better go along because uh, I've been there before. And I can tell if the girls are deteriorating in here. All right, Jesus, there's your party. You'll leave in the morning. We'll wait for you at the river. Oh, Jim, whatever your business is, good luck. 
Thank you. Say, Jim, uh, maybe she's got some friends, huh? Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. When we get to Hondo Seco, you go your way and I'll go mine. You understand that? Well, now, you ain't being too sociable about the whole thing. I don't aim to be. This is no concern of yours. None of you. Yeah, I think he means it. Hondo Seca is sure a lively town. I apologize, Jim. What for? You sure as heck didn't come in here for pleasure. Never mind what I came in here for. Oh, take it easy, Jim. Nobody's jumping on you. Hey, Seuss, when do you figure on going after them horses? Well, it is too far for today. We will sleep here tonight and leave tomorrow morning. Good. I'll be here. Hey, Jim. Look, we don't want to butt into your private business, but we're friends here. We're supposed to be working on this thing together. What happens if you can't make it by tomorrow? Then I'll catch up with you. Let me worry about it. Well, I wouldn't want to take that privilege away from you. Thanks. Boy, I don't understand him. He told you to let him worry about it. Hey, there's a saloon over there. We could all use a drink. You got no one to gamble with? You fellas are new in town, ain't you? Yeah, we just rode in. What do you have? I'd like some whiskey. What do you have? Some tequila? Uh, whiskey. Well, I'd like on. to watch her. <laughs> no, whiskey, yeah. I'll leave the jar. We'll probably want a second one. <laughs> oh, no. You're not getting drunk in here. Are you judging how much uh, whiskey we can drink or something? Better listen to Casey, mister. This wouldn't be a good town for you to get to, into trouble. I never get into tr uh, trouble much. Casey, you know who they rode into town with? No. Jim Quince. Hey, what do you do that for? You're not drinking my liquor. You own this place? No. Oh, wh who does? I want to talk to him. He wants to talk to the owner. Yeah. It's too bad Brad Lands ain't in town. I'm sure he'd like to discuss the whole thing. Get out. I can give you an argument on that, Mister. Sure you could. But when the owner ain't here, I'm in charge. I've got a right to order you out of here. And I've also got a legal right to use this gun if I have to. Legal right? For a bartender, you're sure sounding like a lawyer. Well, let's just say it's a message you can pass on to Quince or his brother. Now get out! Come on, Roddy. We don't need to rot gut. <laughs> Geraniums. Small, delicate things. They'll grow in Texas, but I always feel they don't really belong here. Uh, Matt, you ain't changed much in six years. Has it been that long? Yeah. We should see more of each other. Well, uh, drovers and judges don't travel the same road much, you know. I suppose that's true. Sit down. At any rate, you're here now. Be able to stay for a few days, won't you? Oh, well, I'd like to, but uh, I've got to get back to the drive tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, tell me, Matt, how's, uh, how's Joanna? I'm not very pleased with my daughter. She 
could always twist you around her little finger, couldn't she? Well, she's my favorite niece, you know, and come to think of it, the only one I've got. I'd be happier if... Judge Quince, dinner is nearly ready. My brother's eating with us. Oh, thank you. Will you show him where to wash up, Hattie? Yes, Judge. Joanna's awful anxious to see you. Joanna, oh, girl. I'm so glad to see you. I was rough getting away from the drive, but once I got your letter, I had no choice. Oh, Lord, darling, I want to talk to you. Come on. How long can you stay? Well, tomorrow morning. Well, I have to go out with the other drovers and pick up some more horses. Then it'll have to be tonight. What will? Now, I know your letter said you needed help real bad, but help for what? To get away from, from this house, from my father. Well, somebody would think you were a prisoner. You're talking about your own father, Joanna. You wouldn't know him, Uncle Jim. He's changed. He's changed so much. When I was a little girl, he used to be so gentle and wonderful, but after Mother died, he was different. Strange and demanding. I love him, but I can't live only for him and his way doing what he wants me to do. Joanna? Yes, Father? Dinner in five minutes. I'll be there. Now, look. I'm in love, Uncle Jack. His name is Brad Lyons. That's fine. I, I'd like to meet him. There's a warrant out for his arrest. The charge is murder. Brad owns the saloon next door. He's a gambler. So Brad and I were running away to be married. We rode out at night. Father sent some men after us. They caught up with us a few miles outside of town. Ordered us to stop. Brad refused. There was gunplay. Brad had to fire back in self-defense. One of the men was killed. Well, I've been around long enough to know the law ain't always right. But Joanne... There aren't any buts, Uncle Jim. They had no legal right to chase after us. We weren't breaking any laws. Self-defense? Why did he run for it then? They said it was murder. Besides, why do you think they call my father the hanging judge? wouldn't have made any difference if it was self-defense or not. Father would have pronounced the sentence. The only sentence he ever passes is death by hanging. Look, <clears throat> kitten, I, it's hard for me to swallow a man being a, a gambler and a saloon keeper that easy. Drovers don't have very good reputations either. That's different. Is it? You know what people think of drovers, don't you? Kitten, it, it depends on the man. That's what I mean. You're a drover, Uncle Jim. Brad's a gambler. You're the two people I love most in the world. I want you to help me get to it. Well, what this really comes down to, then, is uh, me believing in your judgment, ain't it? Where's your young man now? Waiting for me. In Carlisle, just across the New Mexico border. He's got a house there, he wrote me. A small house, but a pretty one. There are rose bushes in the front yard. Mr. Lyons, the day's journey is over. Time for the passengers to stretch their legs. How much is sleeping? Uh, tomorrow we'll be in Honda Seiko. Five minutes after that, you'll be up in front of Judge Quince. And I figure it'll take him about 30 seconds to sentence you to hang by the neck until you're dead. And a half hour after that, you'll hang by the neck until you're dead. Shut up! Me, I only 
tried to steal a few cattle. Sentence for that's one to ten years. Most judges, one year. Some five. But Judge Quince, it'll be ten years. And that's just for trying to steal a few head of cattle. You tried to steal the judge's daughter. Find me. All right, go on out, one at a time. Under circles changed a lot in the last six years since I took office. It was wide open, riotous, disorderly. Since then, it's become a law-abiding town. How many hangings did it cost? I don't make the laws. No, but you pass sentence, and always the most severe sentence you can. I see no reason for going easy on lawbreakers. Have you ever heard of something called mercy? Men who abide by the law don't need mercy, and the others don't deserve it. Well, that a man can make a mistake. And I do my best to see that he has no chance to repeat it. Father, you're a bitter, bitter man. Don't you see? When you use the word of the law without heart and compassion, that's... That's the worst kind of law-breaking. You may need mercy yourself someday. How can you be so sure that you'll never make a mistake? Go to your room. What do you call it, this thing that makes you act the way you do? A love of justice? I told you to go to your room. Because it isn't love of any kind. Matt, I, I remember when you became a lawyer. It was a long time ago. Yeah, I remember something else, too. And, uh, I guess the, the reason I remember it so well is because I always looked up to you. The, uh, I couldn't read a book clone through. I was too dumb, I guess. Just being a drover was about the best I could hope for. But, uh, you were different. Maybe that's the reason I remember it so clear. Remembered what? Well, it was something you said uh, on your first case. That the uh, letter of the law kills, but the spirit gives life. I read it. Yeah, you, you read it, but uh, I'm the one that remembered it. Excuse me. Matt, you're still taking revenge, ain't you? No matter how many men die, none of them can bring your wife back. I'd rather not discuss it. Well, maybe you should. Well, you know as well as I, it was an accident. Callahan gets drunk and is thrown out of a saloon one night, and he climbs to his horse and gallops down in the middle of the street, firing his gun off. Well, a wild bullet kills your wife. It was a shame, Matt. It was a dirty, low-down shame, but it was an accident. She was 23 years old when she died, with a drug's bullet in her. When you talk to me of mercy... I spoke with no mercy. It was the daughter of the woman who was killed, remember? Joanna's a child. She knows no better. How much better do you know? You're a guest in my house, Jim. Are you staying the night? Just how welcome would I be? That's for you to decide. Follow the girl.
Scotty. I ain't on that guard. Scotty, I need a horse. Jim, what are you doing here? What, what, what do you mean you need a horse? You got one of your own, ain't you? Look, I need a horse real bad. Jim, you've been giving us a rough time for this whole trip. As a matter of fact, everybody in this town has been giving us a rough time. I'd like to know why. Oh, wait a minute, Pete. Give him a horse. If he don't uh, want to tell us what his business is, we don't want to know about it. This is a family affair, and tell you the truth, I'm not too proud of it. Look, we ain't pressing you about it, Jim. I owe you something. I'll tell you this, my brother's a judge in this town. Well, what's that to be ashamed of? Have you ever heard of a hanging judge, Pete? Yeah, that's a judge that if, if he could send us to prison for 30 days or hang into the nearest tree, he'd wind up hanging. All right, well, that's all I can tell you. Now, listen. I'll... <laughs> Judge Quince, we got his daughter in a place he won't ever find her. If he turns bread lions loose, he'll get his daughter back inside an hour. If he hangs bread lions, we hang his daughter. This is, this is all my fault. She's one needing my horse. I hope to get away from the judge's house. I was going to meet her. Look, I, I got to see my brother. He needs to know about this. Now, wait, oh, wait a minute. You're not going alone. Look, we, we're forgetting one thing. We got to get those horses back to the herd. Hey, Sus, if, um, if, we're, if we're not back here tomorrow morning, you can hire some more wranglers to help you with the Ramuda, can't you? Si, senor. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take uh, Jesus and get the money to him and bring his horse. I'll catch up with you two later. Well, now, hold on now. I can't drag you into this. We're already in this thing, Jim. Come on, let's go. So I was going to take her to Miller's Crossing, put her on the stage for New Mexico. And... Guess that's where Brad Lyons was waiting for. Brad Lyons is in a prison wagon on his way here. Why didn't you tell you one of it? Whatever you might think of me, Jim, you should realize one thing. I love my daughter. I wanted to spare her as long as I could. All you got to do is send out orders and have this man released then. I can't do that. The man's a prisoner. He's being brought here for trial on a charge of murder. What about you, she was safe here, Jim. If you hadn't interfered, she'd still be safe. You got a right to say that. I did what I thought was right, but it didn't turn out that way. We've got time to hum haw about now. We, it's Joanna we've got to save. I cannot release a man charged with murder. Even if she's killed? That's a bluff. I don't believe they'll do anything to her. You mean you hope? And what kind of hope is that? I won't think about that. You won't think about that? But you just said you loved your daughter. I'm a judge. I swore to uphold the law. I've done that here, Jim. The people have hated me for it. They still do. But this town is a decent town. There's no violence in the people anymore. I've taught them to respect the law. I can't break it for anyone's sake. She's our own flesh and blood. I know that. You know it. But you don't feel it. Not the way a human being should. Do you know how many killings there are every week in the West? Every day, every hour? I've given my life to fighting against the rule of violence. That's your choice, but you can't give Joanna's life. When a general leads troops into battle, do you think he can allow himself to worry about the number of men who must, who will die in that battle? He might be a better general if he did. Why do you carry that gun strapped to your side? I'll tell you why. Because otherwise your life wouldn't be worth a spent bullet. Because otherwise you couldn't drag your cattle a hundred miles along a trail without being killed yourself and your cattle stolen. There's only one way to stop that. The law must be enforced, ruthlessly, and without exception. Maybe what you say is true, but Matt, this is your own daughter. Yes, my only child. The daughter or mother that I love more than anything I've ever loved in this world. As a father, I do whatever that note asks me to. But as a judge, I cannot deal with criminals. Matt, send somebody out to that wagon. I shall. Because I don't think the men who are holding Joanna will stop at that. I think they'll try and attack the wagon. Of course I'll send someone out to the wagon. Additional guards to make sure that Brad Lyons is brought to trial in the town of Hondo Seco and pays the penalty that the law imposes. Matt! Well, he had the right idea, but he was sending the wrong men. 
How about us going after that wagon? Well, it shouldn't be too hard to find. We know where it's coming from, where it's coming to. Well, let's find it. The judge's brother, I recognize you right away. Well, that's what made it easy. Hey, that chain. Keep the key. Lions. I am. Hey. I never saw you before. You got any objections about being freed by a stranger? No objections. Hey, what about me, Ted? Uh, what about you? I didn't, we didn't figure on you. You mean you're going to let them take me into town and put me away for 10 years just because I tried to steal a few measly head of cattle? Quince, there's another Jasper in here. What do we do with him? He stays. I don't want to break any more laws than we have to. Sorry. You take one of the guard's horses. A pleasure. You won't get away with this, judge's brother or not. I'll worry about that when the time comes. You go on now, I'll catch up with you. Right. <laughs> All right, we're going to get in that wagon. One at a time when I tell you to. Come on, come on. All right, you first. That was just so you won't have to break any more laws than you already have. <laughs> There's no sign of Quince. Something must have gone wrong back at that wagon. I didn't hear any shots. Let's get moving. You're sure concerned, aren't you? I never worry about people named Quince, whatever happens to them. Even if the first name is Joanna? What do you know about Joanna? You got friends, mister, and they got ideas, and they've also got Joanna. I don't believe you. Why do you think we risk our neck to get you out of that prison wagon? You like me. Uh, so what happened to Jim Quince is Joanna's uncle. Some friends of yours got ideas. They've got Joanna. They threatened to kill her if you're brought in for trial. I didn't ask them to do anything like that. They didn't wait for you to ask. I think I know the place where they'd be holding her. Yeah, well, right now I'm worried about Jim. I don't care what you're worried about. Listen, you. If it wasn't for Jim, you'd be back there on that wagon on the way to a trial and to be hanged. He didn't do a thing for me. If it wasn't for Joanna, he'd probably showed up tomorrow in the front row of people waiting to see me hanged. Yeah, and I'd be right there with him. All right, we can't stay here any longer waiting for Jim. The judge probably sent out deputy as soon as he came, too. They pick up our trail, it's not going to do Jim any good. Well, I hate to go off and leave him. Oh, well, you think I like it? You lead out. I don't need your company. Well, you've got it. At least until we find out if that girl's all right. Nice to have you along. You want some of these free holies? Suit yourself. You men are as bad as my father. You're all filled with hate. Thanks for the compliment. If I thought Brad had anything to do with he it... He didn't. I told you he didn't. He didn't have a chance to. Your old man's making sure of that. There is one difference, though, that you better bear in mind. He likes what he's doing. Sure, I'm glad to see you, Brad. So am I. Especially since it's not through the courtesy of Judge Quince. Didn't he turn you loose? You ought to know the good judge better than that. Yeah. Uh, how's everything? Joanna? Fine. Uh, right into town. Tell Casey if he still wants to buy the saloon, it's going for a good price today. Right. Uh, one more thing. Bring back a couple of good fast horses, will you? I'll do it. You have a 
haven't answered any of my questions. This ain't no courtroom. Wherever a judge is presiding, that's a courtroom. Jim, you've got to tell me where your men took Brad Lyons. And I've told you, I don't know. You and I, we've traveled different roads. We don't look at things the same way. But I know you're an honest man. My brother couldn't be anything but honest. Your brother could be anything, but it just so happens he is honest, Matt. The only thing is, I had no choice. I couldn't let him kill Joanna, even if it meant breaking your law. Are you sure by doing what you did, you saved her life? The note said if Brad Lyons was freed, Joanna would be released in an hour. By this time, Brad Lyons should be back with his friends. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. We'll say he got back to them at this very moment. It's a few minutes past three. We'll wait for an hour, Jim. Brad, you wouldn't mind if Bob here would go outside and kind of keep his eyes open, would you? The judge is bound to have some men out looking for you by now. All right, Bob. Mr. Lana, we better get going. We'll take you back to your father now. Brad, I don't want to go back. Well, that was the deal. If Brad Lyons was turned loose, well, you were supposed to be returned to your father within an hour. Rowdy and I are kind of anxious to get back to town, if you don't mind. I appreciate what you did for Brad, but I'm not going back. Well, that was the deal. I'm calling for a new deal. Hennigan, they don't need their guns. Your hands on the table, boys. Well, aren't you going to say something about this, Joanna? I'm going with Brad, wherever he wants me to go. There's already a price on my head. You ought to know that. I don't care. It's not going to be easy. There'll be marshals all over the West looking for me. If they find you, they'll find me with you. Joanna and I won't be able to leave till nightfall. What about your Uncle Jim, Joanna? As far as we know, the guards took him, taking him into Hondo Seco as a prisoner. Fred? There's nothing to worry about. The good judge is not an easy man to get along with, but there's nothing he'd do to his own brother. I've given him an hour. More than an hour. You see, Joanna? I told you, you can't deal with criminals. You broke the law. You set a prisoner free. And for what? So far as you know, Joanna's life may be forfeit just as if you'd done nothing. Maybe so, uh, but I had to try. But knowing what was going to happen, I still had to try. And even if it was to do again, I... you'll not have the chance again. There's the judge presiding in the case of the state versus James Quince in the town of Hunter Seco in Blair County. It's my duty to pass sentence on you. Go ahead. The charge is aiding and abetting a prisoner of the law to escape. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Ain't he entitled to a jury trial, Judge? If he asks for it. A jury trial wouldn't make any difference, sir. Plead guilty. You stand convicted by your own confession of a capital charge. Does making a speech help any, Matt? Oddly enough, Jim, it does. If I were just a man, I don't think I'd have the courage to do what I must do. But I'm a judge now. Judges make speeches, of course it helps them. I can forget that the prisoner at the bar is a human being, is a brother. I'm not asking you to remember that. How can I forget it? I don't know if I'll ever be able to sleep again, Jim, but I'm going to pass sentence on you. The same sentence I'd pass on any man standing before me, charged to show charge. The prisoner is sentenced to be hanged by the neck until dead.
Sheriff, remove the prisoner and prepare to execute the sentence of this court as soon as possible. starting on the bottle, are you? It's the side of that gallows they're dragging into place outside. It's the thought of what's going on out there that's making me sick. One brother hanging another. It's the difference. They're both quinces, ain't they? Are you ready to go, Casey? Yeah. Lily, I got a little errand to run. There won't be any business for the next couple of hours, so as soon as you finish that drink, shut the front door, will you? Yeah, how soon are you going to be back? As soon as I finish my errand. Won't be long. brought you something else, the price we agreed on for the saloon. I'm glad to be able to pay it to you. You and me both. Too bad you can't be in town right now. Something real peculiar is going on. What? The judge is hanging his own brother. Stay right where you are. Uncle Jim? I guess he would be your uncle, ma'am. I didn't think he'd do it. Well, they're doing it all right. They're getting the scaffold ready when I rode out. Brad, we got to stop this. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Yeah, that's right, Lyons. There's nothing you can do about it. Just run, and you've done that before. Nobody asked your opinion. Well, I ain't charging you for it. Brad, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Give them their guns. You don't know what you're saying. You're running your head right into a noose. I know what I'm doing. It's my neck. All right. There you are, boy. Case. You want to ride into town with me? Let's go. One hanging, he's gonna watch. You do like I say. Guess she doesn't have much stomach for hangings. To tell the truth, I ain't either.
I owe you something for this. I got no doubt you'll repay me. You can still stop this. Sentence has been passed. Then take a look at your brother before we drop him through the trap. you find out if you've got the right man. Why is the execution being delayed? What charge is this man being hanged on? For aiding and abetting a criminal to escape from a prison wagon. The criminal hasn't escaped. He's standing right here. He's right here, and a prisoner. The fact that an escaped prisoner has been apprehended does not exonerate the man responsible for his escape. There's not enough room in the whole of the West to satisfy your appetite, is there? Mr. Lyons belongs in jail until after he's been tried and convicted. In the meantime, you'll proceed with the execution. You be your own hangman, Judge. take my orders from the sheriff. There don't seem to be one around. a murderer, would I come back here? If I was a murderer, would I have cared how many innocent men you hanged? Are you denying that you shot and killed a man two weeks ago? I pulled the trigger, Judge Quince. You fired the gun. If you hadn't sent that man after me... You were stealing my daughter from me. I was going away with the woman I loved, the woman who loved me. You're a gambler, a saloon keeper. You live off people's weaknesses. My daughter's mother... You haven't answered my question, Judge Quince. Who's the murderer?
I sure didn't like seeing you up there, Jim. I didn't like being up there, Rowdy. Brad, can they still do something to you? I think the charges have been dropped. Maybe I better go to the house. Let him go, Joanna. We're different men, him and me, but we're still brothers. When I hurt real bad, I, I just want to be left alone. And afterwards? Afterwards? Well, he'll go to another town. And after a while, he'll hang up his shingle and start practicing again. Well, that's his life, Joanna. Maybe he'll remember. Second Corinthians, chapter three, verse six. I'll pray to God he does. Five iron men says he can't. I'll just take that. <laughs> I got a mouse to feed. Oh, Jesus would be glad to oblige. Jesus! Come on, take that shirt off and square off on him, Sam. He ain't had that shirt off the whole six weeks he's been with us. Man, purely enjoys dirt. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Some other time. Another time. Another time. Another time. Another time. No! No! All right, get it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Black snake whip. Iron bars went with the striped suit I wore for five years. Anything else you want to know? All right, time to move out. Hooked on. Run just like the rod track. Fine. As long as we don't get derailed. Bad news. And why should this day be any different? Right over the next ridge, there's the prettiest, flattest country, the greenest grass. What? Tick fever. Now the last drive through lost half their beeves. Good! Down a year, Sugar Creek. Is it fair size? Fair enough. Then the general store should carry tick powder. How bad is it? Bad enough that we'll have to detour with you through Sugar Creek. There's a valley close by to my ranch. Knee high in grass all year round. Should do you fine. Once we get the powder, we got nothing to worry about. Any of the herd come down with tick, we can make our own dip and run them through. <laughs>
to the chuck hole a couple of stairs must have caught him. Back off and let him breathe. We better get a doctor. Is he gonna make it? Oh, I don't know. This bleeding's gonna be too much for me. Tell the Sugar Creek's only five or six miles. There's gotta be a doctor. Mushy! I'm gonna need blankets. Bring lots of them. Am I gonna make it? Maybe. Maybe not. I got a boy named Jody. He lives in Sugar Creek with his grandfather, James Wickham. I haven't seen him in... Just take a wagon into town. He can buy what we need while you're rounding up a doctor, all right? All right. I'll send the doc on out and meet you at the store. Doctor? You look pretty healthy, young fella. Well, it's not me. It's one of the men out with our trail herd. Kind of hurt bad. Oh. Well, I just hope you're not too far from town. No, not far from the Garrett spread. Well, Sam Garrett, that's the man who's hurt. Doc, this is an emergency. Yeah, well, I, uh... I just remembered I changed my office hours. Wait a minute, maybe you didn't hear me right. I said there's a man dying out there. A human being. Sam Garrett is no human being. Look, I don't know what your personal grudge is against Garrett, but you're supposed to be a doctor. There's one in Granville. Granville? Where's that? Dewey's. 75 miles. 75 miles? The man will be dead by the time I ride that far. That's his problem. Suppose you could tell me where James Whitcomb lives? Yep. Second house from the end of the street. Not that it'll do you much good. Mr. Whitcomb? Yeah. Unless these eyes of mine have turned in their time, that's a new face I'm looking at. Yeah, my name's Yates, sir. I'm, I'm with a cattle drive east of here. Getting better and better. Been a long time since we talked cattle in this house. Here, plant yourself. I'll call my grandson. Be a great treat for him. Uh, look, Mr. Wickham, there's something you ought to know. Huh? About the boy's father, he's with us. Hurt kind of bad. Well, maybe you ought to tell the boy I'll break it to him gentle. There's no need to break it to him, gentle or otherwise. The day I wiped Sam Garrett out of that picture with my daughter, he was wiped out of our lives forever. Yeah, but the man might be dying. Be better for the boy. Can you say that? Easy. Jody was only knee high when Sam did what he did to the everlasting shame of his family. For five years, I've worked to erase the memory of it. And I've just about succeeded. Look. Mr. Whitcomb Garrett has a right to see his son. He wants to see him. The boy has that right, too, for that matter. Jody! Jody! You're right. It's his choice to make. Jody, this is Mr. Yates. He wants to take you to your pa. You come himself, boy, but he's hurt kind of bad. Why do you have to come here? Well, that's for him to say. I don't have to go, do I, Grandpa? Please, don't let him take me. Satisfied? Look, Jody, your, your pa needs you bad. Killed my mother. Any other questions? Nobody knows his way twice around a skillet, knows enough to be prepared for tick fever. 
That's what I told the trail boss, too. Mm-hmm. And what'd he tell you? He said go into Sugar Creek and get some tick powder. That's the last of them, Mr. Henry. Well, that isn't hardly enough. Be a supply train through here in a couple of days. If you fellas still in the neighborhood, we'd be glad to send some out. Guess I haven't got any choice. Did you find the doctor all right? Yeah, he can't make it. Something you ought to know, Maud. They got Sam Garrett with them. Oh, they have. Well, you take us up right back in the store. Yes, Mr. Henry. Hey! Hey, wait a minute! Ah, uh, that's my property, young fella. There's something biting you, mister. I just bought that stuff. No money changed hands. You ain't bought it yet. Give him the money, Wishbone. These boys are friends of Sam Garrett. I sure could use some volunteers to help unload his wagon. Charger, I'll help you, Mark. Oh, that there ain't gonna be no volunteers for nothing. I'm gonna get my property. Trouble. We bought this stuff, now you won't give it to us. No money changed hands. I changed my mind. Look, Sheriff, we got a herd facing tick fever. All right. These boys brought Sam Garrett back. Oh. Well, it's your merchandise, Mark. Yours to do with as you see fit. This is cattle country. You can't sit around and let a herd get diseased. Oh, it hurts. It sure does hurt. Hmm. I don't know what Garrett did to you people, but whatever it is, he's a human being. And he may be dying out there. Just remember that as you're trying to live with yourself, doctor. All right, boys. Come. Yeah, yeah, I heard. I'd still like to know the reasons why. Only one reason. Sam Garrett. If you mention that name in that town and a wall of hate goes up, so think you could strike a match on it. Yeah, same goes for the powder. When they found out Sam Garrett was with us, they just didn't seem to care about 3,000 head of cattle. How about gathering up a few of the boys and giving Sugar Creek a little visit, boss? And until I find out what it's all about first. Clay, you take another swing up through that tick country. See if you can at least find a thin spot. We don't get that powder. Maybe we can at least try and pull the herd through. It's a waste of time. But I'll try. Just go and see what you can do for Garrett. I've already done all I can. Well, then think of something else. Is there another doctor? Granville. That's 75 miles. Oh. Well, get started. Oh, that'll be too long. Yeah, I know. But we got to try. Oh, you two spread the word. Nobody leaves the herd until I say. Hey, wait a minute. Looks like I won't have to make that ride after all. Doc changed his mind, huh? I brought our so-called sawbones this far. Now you can take over. The town will remember this, Marcy. Coming from you, Doc, that's almost a compliment. Where's Sam? Right over there, next to that tree. Now there's one female that's really got a lot of something. Yeah. I read back to the herd and passed that word. You know, a man once told me these things could uh, settle a lot of things, including a uh, guilty conscience. The use of force creates problems, Yates. It doesn't solve them. You the trail boss? Go favor. Unless I'm permitted to leave right now, you'll both be charged as accessories. Doctor, if that man dies over there, I'm gonna be doing some charging. See?
See, it's a stalemate, Doc. Get your bag, huh? Doc, how bad do you think? Can you boil water? If you know what to do with it. Just so it's hot. We'll need plenty of it. This isn't going to be pretty. You better wait over at the buggy. Doc, I'm sorry. Save it for the sheriff. Hey, you two. Come on over here. I we'll need the both of you to hold him down. Si, sí, senor. Rowdy Yates, ma'am. I oh, know. I saw you in town. This here is Gil Favor. I'm much obliged to both of you. For Sam, I mean. It's more the other way around, Miss... Uh... McGillahinahan. Uh, that's why everybody calls me Marcy. Yeah. Oh, if you hadn't brought the doctor, nothing we could have done would have made any difference. Yeah, you better take this. You might need a doc again sometime. Oh. Well, you might as well throw that away. Fire and pins busted. Oh, the coffee's hot. Yeah. Watching Sam ain't uh, gonna help him any. Yeah. Talking, Mike. So talk. What should we start with? You or Sam? I just came along for the ride. Sam's the one that counts. Why'd Sugar Creek close its doors to him? Because Sam is a ghost five years dead. And Sugar Creek can't stand to look at the face it wore the day it nailed the lid on his coffin. Is that why Whitcomb and Jody feel the way they do? The way they talk, you'd think Sam would be better off in it. Not Jody, Mr. Yates. Only Whitcomb. He hates Sam for taking his daughter away from him. He never forgave the marriage. Well, the boy blamed Sam for killing his mother. Whitcomb put those words in his mouth. And he put the hate in his heart. Nancy Garrett died of heartbreak because they took Sam away from her. There never were two people more in love. Why'd Sam leave Sugar Creek? Well, Sam came home in 62. One side of him weighted down with some iron left over from Manassas. And he saw right away that the cattle business wasn't going to keep Sugar Creek alive. So he decided to switch to cotton. He got everybody to go along with him. Everything worked out just fine. Until he sold his first crop to a buyer from Boston. I know it doesn't sound bad now, but well, five years ago, trading with the North was worse than dancing with the devil, at least in these parts. Well, Sam swore that the man was an agent from England, but he, he couldn't prove it. It was a trial? Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you want to call it that. Sam was branded a traitor, and he was sentenced to five years of hard labor, and if that wasn't enough, those two-legged locusts took his house, his crops, and his land. You feeling about this place the way you do? Why'd you stay? Well, I run a saloon, Mr. Trail Boss. Besides, I stopped chasing rainbows a long time ago. Does, uh, Sam know how Jody and people the Sugar Creek feel about? Well, a little. I mean, I tried to tell him, but... Garrett wouldn't need any telling if he had any sense. Man has to be a pretty big fool to come back after what he did. Sam, is... Well, I stopped the bleeding, cauterized the wound. He's in no danger. Not from that wound, anyway. And what? Men have been hung for less. That was five years ago, Doc. Five years or 50. Treason is still treason, Yates. And the people who were living here when he sold out still can't hold their heads up in decent company. Morton paid for what he did. You can't ask for anything more. We might, if we have to look at him. Well, you better get used to it, Doc. See, Garrett owns a hundred head of mixed cattle in this herd. He's planning on settling down right here, starting a new brand. He thinks that. Not only a stubborn fool, he's a blind fool. 
Everyone knows that a trader forfeits his holdings the day he's sentenced. Garrett doesn't own a ranch. He doesn't own one square inch of land in this county. But I do. When the Garrett land went on the block, I bought his house and 50 good grazing acres. Well, you said that was an investment. So I lied. As soon as Sam is well enough, I'm going to take him back where he belongs to stay. If you go through with this, I'm warning you, you're through in Sugar Creek. I was through in Sugar Creek five years ago. Mind if I take over your camp for a spell? Long's you give it back. <laughs> well, trail bossing ain't in my line. See, I told you, Doc, it's a standoff. I think you ought to throw in your cards when you still can. I haven't got that much to lose, Yates. But what about you? Sam Garrett and Sugar Creek are none of your business. You take my advice, you'd head north while you still can. With Dick Country facing us up ahead, not without that powder. Well, suit yourself. But like I said, the sheriff is going to have something to say about it. Fine. We'll hear it together. How do you keep the men here? Horses are over there, Doc. Everything's going to be just fine, Sam. Now all you have to do is open them big blue eyes and say hello to an old friend. I thought it was you, Marcy. But... Well, you ain't the type to be wearing wings. I know. Me and Lucifer. Your letters, Marcy. They helped. Well, I... I needed practicing with my letter, and I knew you were a good excuse. Got a couple bucks for you to buzz, Sam. How about it? Sure. Just help me strap on my spurs. <laughs> Where's Jody? Oh, well... Uh, he, uh, he went on a hunting trip. He'll be back tomorrow. After five years. Tomorrow's a long way off. Marcy, I wrote to him regular. He never wrote back. Why? Mr. Wishbone! Oh, it's hot! Oh! Well, use the handle. Sam, you just rest easy. I got you some soup here. Oh, thanks, Wish. I don't feel much like eating. Look, I nursemaided that calf of yours. I guess I know how to nursemaid you. You do as you told, Sam. Now, look, Wish, I now don't... you just eat, and I'll do the talking. Now, isn't that good? You feel better already, don't you? How do you tell a man his only son wishes he was dead and buried? There aren't going to be any more tomorrows. It just can't come from me. But I've got to find a way to get Jody out here. For an old friend, you're taking a lot on yourself, aren't you? I'm Marcy, Mr. Yates. I'm no more, no less, no apologies. But Sam, he... He's something special. You see, a long time ago, he poured me out of a bottle and pointed me due north. It's as simple as that. Well, he needs you now, Marcy. He needs Jody more. Yeah, I was thinking about that. You know, the herd's all bedded down. I haven't got too much to do. I think I might just take a ride into town, come sun up, have a little talk with that boy. You know, if I stay around here much longer, cowboy, I'm going to start believing there's hope for the human race after all. Just don't let Sam get drowned in wishbone soup, huh? Busted fire and pants. Thanks, Mort. Gee, I didn't realize it's taking so long. I just thought you ought to know about it. I think she's gone too far. Yeah, we'll find out about it in the morning. Mm -hmm. 
Come on, Will. Close the door. Yes, Mr. Well, Doc, I was about ready to start looking for you. What happened? Marcy. She came after me with a gun. This private party? Not anymore. Not as far as that saloon woman is concerned. She forced me to tend Sam Garrett at the point of a gun. And Mr. Trail Boss here, he backed her up. There's laws against that. And jail cells to back him up. This was against killing a man, too. Garrett probably had died. But then I figured it just must have been some kind of mistake. No. No mistake. Treason is treason, no matter how you read it. Sam Garrett ain't welcome here, and neither are his friends. Six weeks ago, I didn't know he was alive. You brought him back. And brought a hundred head of cattle from me. Asked if he could stay with the drive until we reached Sugar Creek. Now, that's the whole of it. What do you want the cattle for? Well, I gathered to start up his ranch here again. He's got no ranch. Wrong, huh? Marcy is going to turn title back to him on that piece that she bought. He should have run that woman out of Sugar Creek five years ago. Look, this woman and Garrett and Sugar Creek are your problem. That herd out there is mine. All I'm asking for is enough powder to see him through the tick country up ahead. All right. I'll make a deal with you. You can have your powder if you help us get rid of Sam Garrett. No. That cattle that uh, he bought off of you. Unmake that deal. You take the cattle back, he can't stay here, ranch or no ranch. The cattle already belongs to Sam. Not if you take it back. I'm sorry. It's not my way of doing things. Don't be a fool, Faber. A traitor like Sam Garrett isn't worth your herd. Deal's already made. As far as I'm concerned, that's the way it'll stand. Just one more thing. I may put out a warrant for you for holding Doc against his will. Now, you think that over. Well, I'll do that. You think this over. I'll be back with my men for that powder. I don't bluff, Faber. You take one thing from Sugar Creek at gunpoint, and you got a war on your hands. Well, then we got a war on our hands. I take my herd through that tick country without protection. That disease will spread for 500 miles. You find a law to change that. I'll listen. I said, Mr. Yates, I haven't got a father. She didn't hate your pa, boy. And he didn't kill her. How do you know? Why would he come back? Why would he come after you? He was all the things your grandfather said he is. Your pa's hurt, boy. He needs you bad. That's a lie. For five years, he didn't care if I was dead or alive. If he really cared, why didn't he write? He did write you. He, he wrote you regular. Yates! You were told once you were not wanted. Next time, I'll have the sheriff say it for me. I was just leaving. You can't run away from this thing, Jody, any more than you can run away from a shadow. I think you owe it to yourself to find out what the real truth is. Or to her, maybe. Jody, the next time that man bothers you. Grandpa. Yes? You and me, we always told each other the truth, right? That's right. Did Pa have a right? About once a month, I burned him. Just like I burned everything else that he ever touched. Well, don't you see, boy? I did it for you. I couldn't have him destroy you like he did her. I did it for you. Jody, you believe me, don't you, when I say that I did it for your own good? Sure. Before long, he'll be gone, and then everything will be like it was before. Jody, promise me you won't try to see him. It would only cause misery. Grandpa, I can't promise. Grandpa. 
Grandpa? Yes? Ma wasn't really ashamed of Pa, was she? I tell you like it fine, but it still isn't going to do much good. But tick infection spreads for five miles. It means we're right back where we started. And if we don't get that powder, only one direction we can head. Back to San Antonio. Well, I was never much for walking back. Give me ten minutes and I'll have that powder by sundown. I'll let you know. see, will you... But just think, I was going to throw them pants away. I was going to cut it up for patching. Mushy, these pants fit just great. But I, uh, I don't know, I can't seem to do much with this shirt. Well, ma'am, I got another one, one with some stripes. Mushy. The shirt looks fine, miss. In fact, it never looked better. I knew we were short-handed, but I had no idea it was this bad. All right. So I'll never make a drover. Uh, Marcia, this is Clay Forrester, our scout. <laughs> so I noticed. That uh, horse of yours could use some cooling off. See to it. The rest of you get back to work. All righty. Righty. Time as any to cut out Sam Garrett's cattle and take him over to the spread. All right. Use enough men to get him there by dark. Right. Now, right. Now. Now? All right. How's the patient? Oh, I'll be all right. I'm not so sure about the boys. <laughs> you always told me it took war paint and a St. Louis dress to make a man sit up and look. Okay. So next time I'll wear boots and a fresh set of freckles. Well, either way, I like what I see. In a cattle camp, any woman, it'll look like she just stepped out of a store catalog. Don't let the sun get in your eyes, Sam. Well, now that works both ways, Marcy. You stand to lose a lot by coming out here, taking my side against Sugar Creek. Why? Oh, maybe because I uh, can't abide by stacked decks. <laughs> Or maybe I'm just naturally interested in uh, table stakes and short odds. No, Sam. All right. You did something for me once, and I... Uh, I'm just trying to balance the books. Eh, that's not enough, either. Marcy, I'd like to think that once this is done, we can both keep a little of that. Sun in our eyes. You've been away a long time, Sam. Don't see anything you regret. It's sad, Marcy. And I never felt better. Sam Garrett. He's right over there. He, uh, he's been waiting for you, Jody. You my pa? Just as certain as you're my son. What's so certain about that? You haven't seen me in five years. Well, a man doesn't have to see his son every day to know him. I hear you got hurt. Is it bad? Oh. Well, no worse than the time you took a header out of the peace tree, remember? Why'd you come back? To see you, Jody. To make a home for you, if you want it. I already got a home with Grandpa. 
Yeah. I'm sure he's been good to you, too. But I just hoped you'd want to be with me. Jody, we were happy at that ranch once. I figure we can make it work again. I got cattle with me and a few ideas about stocking a new herd. I, I even got a calf for you. Will you come and visit me once in a while? Maybe. I'm glad you're not hurt too bad. That meant a lot to you, Dad, Jody. Thanks for holding my horse, mister. Anytime. Well, that's a start. Now the rest is up to Jody. I'm afraid the rest is up to Shook Creek. Heard there was a meeting going on. I figured maybe you'd like to hear what I got to say. Well, we understand how you feel, Jim. The only trouble is this whole thing's gotten out of hand. Some drovers. From where I sit, I figure we made a big mistake holding back that powder. Favor and his boys can come in here and take anything they want. Now, every judge in the territory would back them up. Well, give them the powder. Well, that's just what we decided to do, Jim. Makes sense. No use fighting 20 men to get it one. We all feel the same way about Garrett. But there's nothing we can do about it. Marcy saw to that. You mean you're willing to let him settle here again? Pollute the very air you breathe? Well, like I just told you, there's nothing we can do about it. There's one thing we can do about it. Wait till his friends head north and then hit him. Burn out his ranch. Run off his stock. Without that, he's got nothing you'd stay here for. Where Garrett's concerned, I'm not too fussy about the law. But that's going too far. As long as I'm wearing this, there's not going to be any burning or raiding. Time will take care of Garrett. A couple of months, he'll have to leave. A few months may be too late. I don't want to lose Jody the way I lost Nancy. I told you, Jim, we understand how you feel. But... No man understands how I feel. And none of you understand to what lengths I'd go to destroy Sam Garrett. Now, look, five years ago, you were all howling for a tar overcoat and a long ride on a short rail for him. And now you're ready to forget what he did. Garrett paid his price. The law asks for no more. Maybe the law doesn't, but I do. Only I'm not asking. I'm telling. Just what does that mean? You bought a piece of Garrett land art up at the head of the valley. Take off that badge and it would be your rocking chair address, right? That new hotel of yours, Mort. That was built on land that was once Garrett land and the same thing for you, Harper. That sawmill that you own with Judd, Garrett land. Well, we bid on it fair and square. The land's ours. Only because he was convicted as a traitor. But suppose he wasn't guilty. Suppose he can prove that someone else arranged that cotton deal up north. Then he would have legal title to his property, and all that would be left to you are broken dreams. Well, that's crazy, because Garrett was guilty. Of course he was guilty. There's no question about that. That's ridiculous. You're all wrong. I set up that deal, and then I fixed it so every door was slammed in Garrett's face. The only mistake I made was to let him walk out of it alive. Which all adds up to only one thing. Either you back me up now, help me run Garrett clean out of the territory, or you stand to lose everything you own. Well, what's it going to be? Spend the rest of your life in broken down rocking chairs with no land to rock on? The vacuum where your pride used to be? Make up your mind, boys. It's everything you own or get. Now, and personal feelings to get in the way of common sense. You can have it, Potter. Be no charge for it. 
Thanks. What about Sam? Like you said, Favor, he's our business, not yours. Good luck to you. All right. Mr. Favor, you can have your camp back now. Marcy, never be the same. Hey! Oh, ma'am, no. you don't want to forget your dresses and things. Oh, Mushy, I'm sorry. I, I forgot I still have on your... Oh, you can keep them, ma'am. I couldn't never wear them again. You know, if uh, Sam ever runs out on you, Marcy, you can expect me to come calling, huh? I remember that, cowboy. Favor, I'm beholden. Ah, Sam, next time we're through this way, we'll probably contract in your herd to take it north. You sure you can handle Sugar Creek alone? I'm not alone. Not anymore. I can handle it. Take it easy, Sam. No, I don't like it. Town gave up kind of easy. Oh, it'd take more than a town to beat that there. Well, what are you all standing? For, waiting for a prayer meeting? Wishbone, get that powder loaded. Start rolling. The rest of you line out that herd. We got a drive to go with. Grandpa? Yeah. Where are you going? Just a little hunting trip, Jody. Nothing to worry about. It's pa, isn't it? I'll be back for supper time. Proper. You ought to be able to get along just fine until Jody... You're planning on leaving? Well, I got a saloon to run, remember? You don't need me. Well, now, that's for me to say, Marcy. Look, I want you to stay. Sam... I ain't much for words, so I'm only going to say this once. You listen, and you listen good. Coming back meant only one thing. Jody, nothing else. This place, the cattle, it was just something to use, like rock candy in a cardboard castle. Now, well, now they mean something more, because you're here. You're part of it, Marcy, part of living again. You take that away from me, and not even Jody could keep the grass green or the sun bright or that kettle inside boiling just right. It's too soon, Sam. You can't be sure. What do you want me to do, Miss McGillahinahan? Get on my knee and bust open these stitches? No, not that. You don't even have to say the words. I'll say them for both. Boys must be getting old. Why, you let almost a whole day pass before you drop by. Five minutes, Garrett. You've got that long to clear out. You and that woman of yours. Five minutes or five years is still the same. I didn't run then and I ain't running now. I make it four minutes now. You have no right 
This land is free and clear. Aren't you no better? You're a law officer. It was a law officer, Marcy. Right now, I'm just another citizen. The badge don't come off that easy. Not when it'll have to cover a killing. This time, that's what it'll have to be. You burn me out and I'll build again. You run me off and I'll scratch my way back. There's only one way this is gonna get settled. Now, either you ride off of here or two minutes is all you've got left. Jim, he means it. So do I. Sooner or later, Garrett's gonna leave us in peace. You're gonna have to put me on that list too. I'm with Sam. To stay. One minute. But you're right, Judy. It is a hunting trip. Huh. Put that rifle away, Jim. It won't work. Where do you want the first one, Garrett? High or low? That's as far as it goes, Jim. If you haven't got the stomach for it, then ride out. It's going to be slow, Garrett. Slower than the five years of purgatory I put you through. Oh, yes. I did it. The only treason you committed was stealing my daughter behind my back. I vowed then that I'd walk on your grave no matter what it cost. Think of that now, Garrett. Think of that when you die. Pa, are you all right, Pa? Are you all right, Pa? I'm just fine, Jody. I'm just fine. You boys out of joy riding? Nope. Uh, so you ride off of that kid, so we, we thought figured... maybe you needed a little help. So we talked it over and when I want help, I usually ask for it. Right? Right. right. Did I ask? Well, what are we sitting here for? We got a herd to push. I know, I know. Head him up and pull him out. I can see I got to take you in hand. Now, that last shot was more than an inch off. <laughs> you show me the hand that shoots as good from the hip, and uh, I'll show you Abraham Lincoln doing cartwheels barefoot. <laughs> Jess. practice? <laughs> you might call it that. Who are you? My name's Roddy Yates. I'm with a ramrod in a herd a few miles back on the trail. Well, Mr. Ramrod Yates, light down. Stretch them bones. Cattlemen are always welcome on your hands and land. Uh, gentlemen! I hate to interrupt. That's target practice? <laughs> Not exactly. You see, we're teaching our friend up there, Mr. Higgins, that old pirate game. 
It's called walking the plank. <laughs> Strange, but I don't seem to share the sense of humor. Uh, you don't mind me being nosy. Why? Well, being a cattleman, you ain't. You ought to know why. He's a nester. He and his kid have been trying to dig up our dirt now for more than a month. You are going to be gone by nightfall, ain't you, Mr. Higgins? No, sir. I ain't. You know, he's the stubbornest cuss we ever run up to. Mr. Higgins, you mean that uh, you aren't even in the least little bit afraid of what might happen to you? Mr. Johnson, I'm scared green, as I say, but that there's my land, and I intend to stay on it till I die. It ain't your land. Oh, yes, it is. Has been ever since I filed my claim. That's the law. They need a limit. <laughs> you know, Father like to die laughing when old Milt brought that claim out. Old Milt? Milt's a town drunk in paradise. He, he sleeps in the courthouse cellar. Keeps an eye on things. Yeah. And he's the court judge now, too. Pa appointed him that so he could uh, take Higgins' claim. Claim under what? What? Under advisement. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Here, Pa, you must really be a barrel of laughs. He's got a middling sense of humor. Let it go, Billy. Besides, time's a wasting, and we can't let our little bird perch up there all day now, can we? Yeah, you must be awful tired up there, huh, Mr. Higgins? <laughs> hey, suppose you just spread your little wings and take off. I told you before, I can't swim. Oh. Well, you better learn and try awful hard, Mr. Nestor. Because I promise you that lead is a slide harder to get through than water. Look, the man said he can't swim. You know, Yates, every time you open your big mouth, I like you less. Suppose you just hop on your horsey and trot out of here before you wear out your welcome. All right, put the gun down. Ramrod, you just made a bad mistake. Let's make it a bigger one. Drop those guns in the lake. I'm warning you. I'm warning you, boy. Don't make me count to three. One. There'll be another time, Billy. I want you boys just to hop on your horses and trot on out of here. For now, cowboy. Only for now. down now, Higgins. With pleasure. <laughs> Stop pressing the heart and my kidneys. <laughs>
Would you believe how they have this flood water listed on the map? Casey's Creek? Well, that don't surprise me, none. That map would most likely list Death Valley as a snow-covered fairy land anyway. <laughs> what do you want to do about this, boy? You just want to wait till it drains off some? About all we can do. Might as well bed them down. I'll see if there's a shallows further on somewhere. Boss. Mm -hmm. Look like no happy time coming. Uh. Who's the boss here? You? Yep. Your favor. Ramrod named Yates? Oh, yeah. Where is he? Wants to know. You caught the question clear enough, cop folk. Now, where is he? Is that puppy up like that all the time? Billy. My name is Joe Hansen. Your Ramrod butted in on a private affair a while ago. I want to talk to him about that. I will, uh, maybe you'd better talk to me. He ain't back yet. All right. Some nester's been nagging me for a month or so. Yates took his part, threw down on my boy Billy here. We owe him. Unless he stopped in town for a drink. All right, you look for him there. But stay away from the farm. Oh, that don't make sense. If you stay away from the farm. I gave him my word we wouldn't bother him before sundown. No use in killing him if we don't have to. I want to clutter up the cemetery if we don't have to. Same thing goes for you and your steers, trail boss. You keep going north and there'll be no trouble. But if one of your drovers steps out of line, you ain't gonna have no herd to push. Is that clear? You know, for a man who's all fired sensitive about his own business, you should sticking a big nose into mine. Now, as long as this is open trail, I'm gonna take my herd where I want to and when I want to. Is that clear? It would be if this were open trail. What does that mean? It means that the herds go through if I let them. It's my valley. Land office don't agree. My land office does. Get started. Mr. Johansson, do you realize there's logs and brush in that river big enough to kill a horse if it hits him broadside? That's your lookout. But I'd advise you to cross anyway. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Why? Snow's melting faster than we thought. We dammed up the headwaters, but the lake's high and the dam's low, and I wouldn't count on it to hold forever. If it busts, you ain't going to have no herd to push. Come on, boys. I'm gonna like this valley. Everybody's so friendly. Yeah, Bo, how far off is that town they mentioned? Well, according to that crazy map, there's a place called Paradise City. It can't be more than hours right north. Three mines, but with a single ramrod. Wish you need some supplies. I can always use sugar. Good. And you find that boy? You put them in that sugar barrel if you have to. But if you do haven't found him after an hour, forget about him. He made his own bed, let him get laid out in it. Or whatever the saying is. Spell. What's a crack in my head and one of them, one of them limbs.
So unless you want to lose an eye, you better start making dust. Look, will you let me tell you what happened? Oh, you don't have to tell me what happened. I can see by the state his clothes are in. You tried to drown him. Come on, Papa. Call Grover. He's in the meadow. Well, go on and clear out of here before I get mad. Get mad? Sarah? Yes, Papa. I'm right here. You're safe now. Where's, uh, where's Mr. Yates? Oh, if you mean that beady-eyed weasel mouth, I sent him packing. He won't bother you anymore. You sent him packing? Well, I, I wanted to offer him a drink. I'd have drowned if it hadn't been for him. A couple of those Johansson men got a hold of me. Isn't he one of Johansson's men? No, 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 no. He's with some trailer. Go fetch him. Oh, no, you stay put, Papa. I'll get him. Oh, Mr. Yates? Look, I've had just about all I can handle before lunch. Oh, that's a shame. Here, I was going to offer you a drink. A what, poison? Ten-year-old straight whiskey. Private stock. Pa told me what you did. I guess we've been having kind of a hard time here. I guess a cow hand to me is like a red flag to a bull. And Papa won't let us have guns, so the only thing I got to shoot off is my mouth. Anyway, I'm truly sorry, Mr. Yates. And I apologize with all my heart. Well, that's all right. <laughs> well, come on, then. Well, I uh, should be getting back to the herd. <clears throat> Ten-year-old whiskey, you say, huh? Uh, how'd you like it? Mr. Higgins, this stuff's about as smooth as a uh, blue-eyed, blonde-haired girl's cheek on a soft summer day. <laughs> Made it myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Papa says every man ought to have two professions. Other one, silversmithing. Yeah, yeah the only trouble is, there don't seem to be what you might call a cry in demand for silversmithing in Paradise Valley. Huh? At least not yet. Well, maybe you ought to move on towards San Francisco. A city like that ought to have a big market for silversmithing and fine whiskey. Mr. Yates, didn't you hear what I said to those two laughing jackasses, Mr. Yates? I ain't stirring one inch from this farm. Market or no market? didn't hear those laughing jackasses right. The way I understand it, Johansson don't take no for an answer, and he's saying no to you settlers. Well, the Indians said the same thing in New Hampshire. But the settlers came, just like they came here. You know, this place was built by a Concord family. They done right well, too, to let Johansson. He barked too loud, and they listened too long, and they ran. So I bought them out. Took everything, everything I had, but it was worth it. You know, I only lived here one month, but it's got home written all over it. That's a, the world turns there, Mr. Yates. Nobody can stop it. Well, Joe Hanson can if he's got the guns. Has he? We're here. Oh, sure, I know. He scared everybody else out. Him and that big talking Billy and their hired gunmen. Maybe someday he'll work up to attacking us. Yeah, well, but in the meantime, we're staying right here. Well, Billy seemed to make it plain enough, Joe Hanson and want you out of here by sundown, period. Sundown? That's right, unless Billy and his boys decide to come in here ahead of time on their own. They won't. You can't be sure about that. Yes, can. Tell you why. There ain't a living soul in this whole valley, except my family and me, that dares to hiccup without Johansson say so. So if he told them to wait until sundown, they'll wait. And then what? Well, then they're human, they're human. When they see that they can't buffalo me, they'll back off, yeah? A man like Joe Hansen doesn't have to buffalo anybody. If he can't get you out one way, he'll just kill you and carry you out. Mr. Yates. Now, wait a minute. All right, suppose you are wrong, though. Then what happens, what happens to her? Well, uh... Papa, maybe... You better go on there, Sarah. I wasn't going to say that. All I meant was 
Maybe we ought to have guns. No, no, no. I'll stand for no violence. Violence? Well, uh, I happen to believe in the law with all my soul, sir. You said it, Higgins. Johansson is the law in paradise. No, sir. No, sir. The law is principles. Principles? There's no principles out here. This isn't New Hampshire. It's different. Well, why is it different? You know, the New Hampshire was a howling wilderness before my grandpa got there. And he didn't turn around and go back to Liverpool like a whip pup. No, sir. He settled down and he raised two missionary sons. And you know that in 90 years, he never shot a gun or struck a blow. And neither of any of the Higginses since. And some of them was mighty provoked. You know, my uncle, he died in China. I brought my pa back when he was killed in the Fijis. And I guess I'm as much of a missionary as they are. Only it ain't religion that I'm preaching. It is the law. A man has to have a use there, uh, Mr. Yates, and a dream. Otherwise, he ain't a man. I'm surprised that you don't see that. Well, I see it, Mr. Higgins. I just don't know. Oh. Sir, get behind me. Oh, Grover, will you stop it? This is a friend. A what? Friend? Oh, my goodness. Well, I thought you told me he was trying to kill Mr. Higgins. He was. He did. Well, that's what she said. Well, I made a little mistake. We'll have to hang a tag around your neck. This cowboy don't bite. Are these your boys here? The little one is. That's Prescott. And Grover, he might as well be. He's lived with us more than half his life. He's Papa's apprentice. Or he was. His term's over. He can go any time he wants. Well, I'm... I'm sorry. Uh, better go and look on her, Mrs. Johansson. Mrs. Johansson? Ah, that's one of our mares. Couldn't think of another name. And stubborn as she is, I thought it was fitting. She's ready in to throw her first colt. Well, I sure wish she'd get it over with. Sometimes I don't know what's wrong with that boy. Well, look, if I don't get back to my herd, trail boss is going to skin me alive. Before I go, Mr. Higgins... No, no, no. You go on, boy. You go on. Don't you fret about us. You know that Johansson talks big. But I can talk bigger if I have to, yeah? Talk isn't going to help now. Don't you understand? What you don't understand, my boy, is that we can take care of ourselves. Mr. Higgins, the fold, it, it's here. What do I do? What do you do? Why, you, uh... What's he do? What do you do? Why, what's he do? Oh, yeah. You people can take care of yourselves just fine. All right. All right, I'm coming. This is Joe Hansen. Cussed stubbornness of some people. Well, this stubborn cuss for once thanks you again. Is there anything you can't do, Mr. Yates? Oh, mighty little. I'd imagine. Oh, it ain't always what a man can do, you know, so much as it is what he's willing to try. Hmm? Sometimes he's got to stop mooning around and jump in. Ain't that right, Mr. Yates? Oh, yeah, yeah. Amen, Mr. Higgins. You know, so I've been thinking... Maybe I take your advice, after all. About Johansson? Yeah. There's no sense in talking to Johansson. I can see that now. So I calculate that maybe I'll go into uh, Paradise City and talk to the people themselves. Persuade them to turn away from these handouts and sloth and Johansons and come over to our side. Higgins, when are you going to get it through your thick skull that you're wasting time? Telling an American the truth is never a waste of time there, Mr. Yates. No one's interested in you. Well, you are. You listen. You understood. Yeah, well, I'm out of my... I... No, I want to 
thank you for everything. Next time you come by, I'll consider it a personal insult if you don't stop here. All right, now, Grover, you take care of everything, will you? I'll be back from paradise in an hour. Boy, it's like trying to reason with a mountain. All rock and half as thick. Pa is some stubborn, isn't he? Think Pa's raw mistreats? Yeah, 100%. Even about talking to the folks in Paradise City? Well, that can't do any good, but it probably can't do any harm either. I hope not. They beat him up pretty bad the last time he went in. Beat him up? Who beat him up? Johansson's men. You, you mean he's going to be spouting off to Johansson's men? More than likely. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, look, this is his business. If he wants to get torn apart, then that's his problem. Maybe I better go right into town with him. Grover. Yeah, you better stay here, like he told you to. Uh, Mr. Yates, where are you going? Paradise. Where else? Folks know who that is? Looks like me when I still had my figure, honey. <laughs> I ain't surprised that you don't know who that is, because that is justice. And there ain't been any justice in this whole valley since that Johansson rode in here. But that, now wait, that don't mean that it's going to be that way forever. No, sir, you don't realize the power you got in your own hands. Get up your hind feet there. Fight! Why don't you start a newspaper, huh? Read it. Worry about what you read. And fix things when they're wrong, eh? And listen to me. Vote, vote, vote. Listen to me. You can't turn your backs on the truth anymore. You can turn your backs on yourself. Get it? Stand together. That's all you need. Well, that mouth's at it again. All you need is a little courage and a little determination to make the law work for you. Stand together. That's all you need. All right, boys, that's it. Your pirate days are over, so you better drop those belts. Get out of here where we got a chance, huh? Higgins! Higgins! Higgins? Rowdy, will you come on? I can't leave him here like this. He won't have a chance. Come on, let's go to the back of the wagon. Wait a minute. Is this that Nestor that uh, Johansson's been talking about? How'd you meet Johansson? He come out to the herd fit to be tied. Said anybody got mixed up in this thing, he's gonna take him apart. Yeah, Mr. Favre will save him the trouble. We can come rolling in with him. We can take him back to his farm, then. Might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. <laughs> oh, oh, I wish you could put that another way.
too easy. They bought it now. Right down the line. Pa warned them drovers to stay out, and he don't warn twice. Now I want everything shut down. And I want every man in town out blocking that trail. That way nobody will get out. Alive. you a little question. Now, if I gave you an order real slow and real clear, you, you think you could carry it out? For sure. Good. Good, good, good. Huh. Right over those hills is supposed to be a city called Paradise. Now, I don't know. It might be a big hole that everybody just disappears into. But whatever it is, I want you two to go over there and find out what happened to Rowdy and Wishbone Quince. We can do it, senor. But I don't want you to get into any trouble. I don't want you to make any trouble. I just want you to look and listen and use your heads. Uh, we can do it, senor. Now, if somebody asks you if you're from the Gil Favor outfit, what do you say? Do I speak English? Fantastic. Brilliant. You're very talented. You're learning. Thunder. Is that right? You ain't worried, are you, boss? Worried? Me? Flooded river in front of my herd, quarter of my crew gone, headwaters rising over a whole built dam, and it's gonna rain. Now, can you tell me what in the world I would have to worry about? feel like a million dollars if this male nurse here would quit fussing over me. I wouldn't have to fuss over you if you stay out of trouble. Well, there wouldn't be any trouble in the first place if you didn't start it. Me? Yeah, yeah. I had them folks right in the palm of my hands. They're just aching. They're aching to split with Joe Hansen. Yeah, sure they are. The only split they're gonna have with Joe Hansen is maybe rushing out here ahead of time. Well, where are they? Where are they? They're probably out getting liquored up, ready for the big event. You still have a chance to get out of here. Now, listen, Mr. Yates, there's exactly two ways that I can lose this battle. One of them's by running, and the other's by fighting. And I ain't about to do neither. Oh, Higgins. Look, Roddy, let's just get out of here before their roof falls in or goes up. Come on. Now, Mr. Quince, there's no hurry. I know. Nobody's coming. These people, I've got faith in them. You also got faith in Johansson? Well, I got faith in human nature. If they can scare me out, they will. And if they can't, they'll know they're beaten. Oh, boy. Uh, I think I'll go check the trail. All right, meantime, don't you fellas join me in another little snort. If we gotta go, we might as well go happy. Ready. Oh, that boy makes me so mad sometimes. Why, because he's trying to save your life? Sounds like a man with sense to me. He's not a man. He's a child. That's the trouble. He's only 19. Oh, and how old are you? Well, it's different with a girl. Yeah. Yes, it is. A girl's more mature. 
She don't want some infant tagging along after her. She wants... What does she want? Huh? You think I'm too young to know my own mind, don't you, Mr. Yates? Yep. Well, you're wrong. Dead wrong. your chin, aren't you? I knew what I was doing. No one who plays with fire knows what they're doing. Look, Sarah. This life here, this is for you. Not, not some dumb, fiddle-footed ramrod who's got a, a saddle for a roof and daylight where his prospects ought to be. Prospects don't make a man. At least you got the courage to stand on your own two legs. Grover, he doesn't, huh? He's just a baby. Well, maybe you haven't let him be anything else. Me? Yeah. What have I done to him? It isn't what you've done. Maybe it's what you haven't done. What's happening around here? In town, they have tar, feathers, even ropes. Well, Higgins, you hear that? Even you ought to be able to understand that. Now get in there and start packing your gear. Senorati, it is no way to leave. Why not? They got the road blocked back about a half a mile. Let us through, it made it plain. Nobody'd get out. You were going to split the people with Johansson. Had them all in the palm of your hand. That ain't Tom's people. They're Johannes's men. Them was cowboys, you seen, wasn't they? No, senor, not vaqueros. Car dealers, bartenders, a blacksmith. They were drinking and laughing like men getting ready for a fine party. Oh. Well, might as well all relax. Looks like we're here to stay. gets over here. I wasn't thinking about Higgins. I'm thinking about that dam. Tell you what you better do. You better find Maury and Steve and go out and open up the East Sluice. You better make it quick. Call a real courtesy coming all the way in here so we don't have to go and get you. Celebrating New Year's a little early this year, ain't you? We want to give your boys a big send off, Trail Boss. Where are they? Higgins Farm. Hold it. I told you that the thing between me and Higgins was personal, but your boys bought in. I put you right in there with them. You ain't going nowhere. he'd go, it'd be Higgins' farm or his own herd. They're the deadest dead ends in the valley. There's no need to wait for sundown now. Let's go.
figure they're waiting on. Well, maybe they changed their minds. They know we are seven men against them. Yeah, who says we're seven? Well, six at least with Senor Grover. Grover does what Higgins tells him. I just offered him a rifle and he wouldn't take it. I'd like to explain about this whole thing. I, uh... Oh, well, uh, I bet she was wondering why we didn't come back and, uh... Hey, Sue, she'd tell him. Me? Well, we, uh... Senor Scarlet? Uh... Wish. Well, it's just a simple matter of... You tell him. Get your horses. Why? We can't go anywhere. They got the place surrounded. Get your horses. Well, we might make us in your favor, but uh, what about the girl? Forget about the girl. Get... Mm. What girl? Oh, Higgins' daughter. He's a 12 year old boy, too. I've got 3,000 head of steer standing by a flood rising river. What is the matter with you knotheads, huh? How did you get into this, huh? Well, it wasn't easy. Can you tell me how any sane man could risk his neck to pull somebody else's chestnuts out of a fire that can't be put out, huh? Yeah, well, then why'd you come after us? It's different. Why? Why? Because I say so, that's why. Here they come. All right, get that wagon in place. Mr. Higgins, I've been with you for 11 years, and I never saw you do a wrong thing in all that time. But you're wrong now. It's too late for talk, I grant you that. But it's not too late to change your mind about fighting. You just take a look outside and tell me how many we'd be fighting against. Well, you never cared about odds before. What's worse, Grover? I never cared about the people who believed in me. I was too busy trying to change human nature. Trying to play God. It ain't right and it ain't possible. Well, I learned. You can't rub people's noses in the law. And you can't change them from animals into human beings. Well, you can try. You once told me that it doesn't matter what a man does so long as he tries. Well, I mean to try and help them drovers. Whether you like it or not, or whether you give up or not, or whether it's right or wrong or possible or anything else. I'm over. Then you stay away from that window, Sarah. Oh, you can't. I said stay away from that window, girl. Sometimes more than I can understand. 
bet you could look that whole bunch if you wanted to. It's a pretty big bunch. Bet you could fly to the moon, too. I bet I couldn't. But I bet your son might. By golly, I bet he might. Providing, of course, we give you a chance to have a son. chance.
hand, Mr. Jansen. Looks like we slipped their mind. Yeah. Wait a minute, Higgins. What did you really come out here for today? Valley's my home. Wouldn't want to see it flooded. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, you can stay on your farm. But if you try to change my valley, I'll block you in any way I can. Any legal way? Do you think there's any 